Alrighty, welcome to Unranked to Diamond on Nocturne. This will be my first game, and what I'm doing here is I'm playing a normal game. <coughs> I'm playing a normal game, and the reason I do that on a fresh account is that if you haven't played any games on an unranked account, if you haven't played any ranked games, then whenever you play normal games, it's going to affect your MMR whenever you go into ranked. So what we're looking to do is win five normal games, Basically in a row, it's not too hard really, and then that will make it so that whenever we do our placement matches, we'll be placed generally higher, or even if we're placed silver, we'll be playing against, say, gold or maybe even platinum players, for example. Uh, the account's name is I Piss My Pants 224 already, so. <laughs> so that's what we'll be rocking with all the way to diamond. Very intimidating. And yeah, um, I hope to show you guys the basics of Nocturne. Through example, but also through the commentary as well. In the earlier stages though, it's definitely going to be a whole lot of um, more noob stomping tactics in a way. So for example, <laughs> for example, our runes are very much um, built to just out, um, out muscle the enemy. So we have Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball, and Ultimate Hunter, and then Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm. With the idea in mind that we're going to be building lethality. And looking to one shot any of the squishy targets that happen to so unfortunately be on our screen. So that's the game plan here. Into Talia, she mostly wants to full clear and look for early plays. If she overreaches for an early play, that's where Nocturne can really have a one up on her. We also have a kind of clear speed advantage on her as, as we go like second and third turn once we get some AD especially if she messes things up, so see how things develop. A couple tips I could give any beginner Nocturne player is that you want to get very, very comfortable with using the Q and the E. So the Q is going to do this, uh, you're, you're throwing this dust at him, right? And then that deals damage. <laughs> and the key to really landing it is just getting right on top of the target. You don't really have to shoot it too early. You don't want to shoot it too late either. And then whenever you shoot that dust, if it lands on a champion, then you'll get movement speed towards them as well. And you will continue, they will, uh, they will continue the trail. Whereas it just does the area that it lands on against the jungle camps here. Let's go ahead and smite this. The enemy bot lane's pushing, so we may be able to find a gank here. You can also use the Q like this for movement speed. It's not a uh, long cooldown at all. Now, these ganks aren't guaranteed, but since the enemy is past halfway in the lane, then we have the option to try to gank them here. But it looks like this is warded, so we don't want to waste too much time. We'll go ahead and go right onto the scuttle. So yeah, the Q, you want to get close enough and then just dump that bad boy right on, <laughs> right on top of him. Any melee champ in League, man, I swear. You will be surprised how close you can get to a champion before you have to cast anything. Q. Now he's now we get the movement speed. Auto. Auto. W. Flash. Auto. Auto. No problem. Nice! We got executed too. Since he didn't damage us, we don't give away any gold. Alrighty, serrated Dirk and back out onto the map. On Nocturne as well, you don't need Sweeper early, so we'll stick to the Warding Totem. Alrighty. So yeah, the basics of Nocturne's ability, your passive will heal you the more you hit the enemy, and you get a little bit of extra damage. This is more for the Bruiser build where you attack them more. The Q is going to deal physical damage, and whenever you're on top of the dust, you gain movement speed and AD. W is going to be a spell shield that also gives you passive attack speed. And whenever you block an ability with the spell shield, then you're also going to get bonus attack speed there. So that combos very, very well with the free attack damage that you get from the Q. And in general, Nocturne's build has a lot of AD um, coming with it. The E is going to deal magic damage. And whenever... It's going to deal magic damage and then channel. If that channel is successfully... Um, if it goes, when you stay on the target, then you'll fear them. And then you get 90% movement speed towards feared targets. So not only do they get slowed <laughs> and take damage, but then also you get movement speed <laughs> towards the... Ay, ay, ay. 
You get, you know, you get a cold and you just cough for two weeks. It is what it is. At least my job doesn't, you know, at least it's not important. And then we full clear here because we clear very fast. We have very good sustain. And then also looking to get level six. Tulia has 32 CS, so I'm not totally sure if uh, her blue side camps would be up here or not. And once I hit level six, I can tell you a little bit about the ulti. But Nocturne's jungle clear is basically always clear in your camps. There's very few exceptions to that. And especially if you're a newer player, you really can just dogmatically clear those camps. All of them every single time. And if the camps are up and you're doing a play, then you probably made a mistake. I mean, those are some easy guidelines to get you going. So there's none of Talia's jungle camps. These lanes are pushed in, we're outnumbered, whatnot. I'll just start the dragon. We also know that Talia is topside because she ganked mid and then exited left. So we're just fine here. If I get lucky, the dragon might give me enough XP for level six. I'm not gonna use my <laughs> smite since I'm not contested. Nice, we got level six. This gives us our global ulti. This is the range. Nice, uh, ulti. Q, E, W, auto, auto. Auto, 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 auto. Nice. Auto. Oh, I don't have Q. Moving. Oh, don't hurt me. Alrighty, nice. Let's push. And like I said, once we're at level six, that will show that guy to exist. How dare you be on my screen right now? So the ulti is paranoia. You darken the map, so whenever you cast that, <laughs> the enemy <laughs> the enemy screen gets very dark, and then they can't see the mini map either. And you have this range. If you look on the mini map, then you see this circle range. If I move my camera here, it's also you can see the range like this. And then any target within that area, you'll be able to recast the R to then shoot right to them. And you can cast the Q, the W, and the E as you're flying. So you want to make good use of that. As you would land on the target casting the Q, because then you'll get that extra AD, extra movement speed towards them. And it, the sooner you cast the fear, the better too, because it has to channel like that. So as soon as you land, you channel it, you're autoing them, you're trying to stay on top of them. And then once they get feared, they're really screwed. Alrighty, so whenever our ulti is on cooldown and all the camps are up, it's a very easy equation of what to do here. We're going to be farming these camps. On that kill, we also got the Caulfield's Warhammer. That's just a little bit more AD and then 10 Ability Haste. That Ability Haste helps us with... Hmm, to flank this guy? Probably. <laughs> Where it's this low elo though, I'm like, maybe I just stay on top of Aurelion. Oh, I hit the turret. That's a mistake. Q. Oh, smite, W, auto, auto, auto. Nice. And then whenever we kill the enemy laner, you can just help them push out. Sometimes they'll just give you the whole wave, I guess. Alright, let's take one turret plate as well here. Nice. Now, Tulio, we have a question. Are your raptors up? They are. Nice. Whenever the jungle pet moves like that, you can see if the camps are up in the fog of war. Nice, so we got a gank off without having to even use our ulti too. I may run into Talia here, but that's fine. I can kill her super easily. I can also kill this Quinn, huh? Alrighty. I guess I'll just try to kill this guy. It's really up to Quinn to make a mistake, though. Oh, and she's going that far forward, so hover the ulti, see the range. Q. E, W, auto. Might. Oh, nice. So we use the W because Quinn has her jump. That pushes us back and then stuns us for a little bit. We're going to be maxing the E second. Putting points in the E. Increases the fear duration and the damage. You want that target to be feared for quite some time if you're going in. Especially with the lethal <laughs> lethality build. So that they can't hit you back. 
Whoa! Auto, 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 flat. No, oh, I didn't get my flash off. Flash behind her so that the Q. <sighs> I got the rift tail, baby. So that the Q doesn't hit us. That was a bit messy. If I played it a little better, she probably would have died. Now this is a... Oh god, run away! There's a bird on the loose! Oh, let's just reset. I was gonna say we could do our two blue side camps. When the goose is on the loose, just let it go, you know? Dusk Blade, Boots Lucidity, and back out onto the map for me. Now Boots Lucidity are, are particularly potent on Nocturne because you get a lot of ability haste. So every time we ulti now, that bad boy's gonna be up sooner. On a 90 second cooldown, that's a minute 30. That's not bad. That's kill a guy, do a couple camps, kill a guy sort of maneuver. So we got the Dusk Blade, and then from here, I'm thinking Axiom Mark. This gives us even more lethality, um, attack damage, ability haste, and whenever we get a killer assist, it reduces our ultimate cooldown. It's like it was built for Nocturne. Alrighty, so basically as soon as <laughs> as soon as my ulti's up, I'm gonna be looking to use it here. Ulti! Q, auto. I mean, that one was a bit too easy. Let's go ahead and shove out this wave, too. Since I have the uh, Rift Herald and the Nasus is dead, I have a bit of time to play with here. We don't have to take the whole turret, either. It's just getting more gold. We're trying to build up our resources as we go here, as you can see. I'm level 9. Run! Oh, Q. You guy better run from me. Anyways, man. Auto. Auto. Like, he's so close to dead if I had an ability. <laughs> Yo, don't play Talia if you're unranked. This is looking bad for this guy. I mean, to be fair, that's a hard champ. One of the first champs I played was Ziggs, and I thought League of Legends was the worst game ever. I couldn't land a Ziggs Q to save my life. I came from Call of Duty on... on console and then I'm playing this PC game and I'm trying to land a Ziggs Q. Nah. So yeah, we just ulted Nasus and killed him. We're doing our camps here and my ulti's almost back up. And that's really the power of the boots lucidity here. 15 seconds. Just give me a second. I'll wait. 8 seconds. You know you want to hit the turret, right? Even if yeah, because he has to back up, and then I'll see him with the ward. Ulti! Q, E, auto, e. Okay. Yeah, okay, he's just warping around. I think he, he had to have flashed, if that's... Hey, get off that thing! Q! I don't want to engage this outright. Wait for my teammates to do a little something. Q, W, E! Whoa, I guess just finish off Talia. Auto. Q, auto, moving. Oh! Ah, close. I shouldn't have turned for the auto on Nasus, I think. If I don't take that damage, I'm I'm fine. Serrated Dirt, Caulfield's Warhammer. Let's get a blue trinket. This will give us the ability to have vision from pretty far away. And that can help us land our ulti. Now, we're about to be level 11. That will put give us two points in the ulti. And whenever you rank up the ulti, you get more range, more damage, and lower cooldown on it. So it's going to go to 275 damage, 3,200 range, and 67 second cooldown. And once we complete that Axiom Mark, that's going to refund 10 plus 40% of our... How much lethality is that? It's going to refund like 20 seconds, I think. We'll see. Fuck. Uh. This what's kind of chill about Nocturne too. No matter what's really happening, it's fine. Ulti. Q E. Nice. Now the Talia was bot side. I could choose to try to take her red side, but <laughs> Ooh, Christ, I would rather be pathing bot to try to fight. You don't have to defend dragons like this, but since I'm so much stronger, it's just hard for the enemy to play. 
so much stronger and the Nasus is dead like that. And then after that dragon, they could choose to attack my bot lane. And I don't want that to happen either. I don't want that to happen without me where I'm so strong at this stage. Ezreal does not have a ward. 31 seconds on my ulti. I have some time to play with. I want to farm some jungle camps in the meantime, honestly. To sit in a bush for 30 seconds is a bit too long. Oh, they killed him without me. Nasus, are you low? No. Maybe I could find Talia. Talia's dead? I got no job, man. Man, there's no way of bot lane. Let's just reset. It's so weird. <laughs> it's fine. I got Axiom Mark, but definitely weird. Axiom Mark. Let's get <coughs> long sword, and then from here, I'm thinking Collector. Collector gives you that shebang of a one shot, and it also uh, Nocturne's passive can crit, so that's even more damage. The crit is kind of whatever on the Collector. It's really about that passive comboed with like total one shot build. Speaking of which, that Nasus is full a full AP. If I find him, then he's prop. Oh, this guy's dead. Ulti. U W E auto. Bye bye. You. Well, my ulti's almost back up. We got two kills. Just five seconds on the ulti. Nice. Quinn. Oh, damn it. I wanted to use my blue trinket. Ah, whoops. Uh, alrighty, Rift Herald's coming mid. I guess I'm pushing mid. My bad. I hate when I do that. Come on down, Mr. Rift Herald. Go ahead. Show him who's boss. My ulti's up. I ought to go bot lane. We'll show Jin to exist. Who's with me? Get a little snack on the way. Alrighty, let's do this. Who wants to die? Oh, big mistake. Being on the screen. What did I tell you about that? Nice. Talia's not hanging out here. So now we have our E maxed. That's gonna give us uh, max fear. Hey, you. <laughs> Let's reset. It's gonna give us max fear duration. Stop. Talia, chill out. 16 seconds on my ulti. Don't make me do something that you're gonna regret, okay? Oh. This is fine. I have to deal with my allies more than they do me. I'll just kill her with Q. Auto. Auto. Nice. Since I was like, four, I don't know, just this much instead of like that much, I knew the fourth shot wouldn't kill me. This, like, most of my tankiness is coming from the levels. That's where Lethality Nocturne really gets his whole juice, where he's not dying and he's killing you. In fact, he's probably one-shotting you. And that's why you farm so, so much. It's the two-part factor. The gold and the XP. And that XP gives you armor, magic resist. Look, 89 armor, 49 magic resist. And you get HP every single time you level up. So you don't have to build tankiness every single time. When what are you doing on screen? Are you out of your mind? Insane. Disrespectful. 30 seconds... <laughs> 30 seconds on my ulti. So we'll just do two camps here. And then go find another victim. Going into the mid game, you also want to spend your ulti to try to win an objective. Rather than just getting more kills, more kills, more kill, more kill. It's good to get the kills, but it needs to lead into something. 
Ulti. Q, E, W, auto, auto. Nice, we spell shield the Lux Q. 30 seconds on my ulti. And now we get dragon. You like that? Kill ADC, why to get the dragon? Nice. And then if my team pushes, then we can probably get this bot turret. And then look to send it into uh, into the top side and play for Baron. Lord help the Jin if he shows on this wave. Poor guy. My goal is the turret though. Like, Jin could be a waste of time for me. Remember to Q when you're hitting the turret? You get more AD. Ulti. Bang. Q, W. I just need to Q again and then she's dead. Q. <laughs> 11 seconds on my ulti. Quinn! Quinn, welcome to the game. Do you want to hit that top turret? Oh, you do. That's, that's a mistake. You know what they say about mistakes. They can't be left unpunished. Ah! Oh. oh, I just lost vision, but check this out. I can use this. Come on, Betsy. Give me vision. Ulti! Q, E, W, auto, 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 auto. I've killed the map. <laughs> Let's reset. Spend our gold. We're level 14 and so juiced. It's time for Baron. Time for Varen and send this bad boy home. Collector, and then from here, we're too fed really, so I'll go uh, into Edge of Night. That double spell shield factor should surely make it where we can't randomly die as we go in. Um, but yeah. And again, Collector is that wha-bam one shot. It's really hard to get another item that competes with it. Alrighty guys, time for Baron. The enemy jungler is bot lane. Come on. Fine, I'll kill the Nasus. Listen, Nasus, you're distracting my boys. You can't have you can't be looking so juicy in the mid lane. Skirts have to be at knee level. Okay, Nasus? Guess I'll reset. Oh, wait, give me this. Q. Ah, oh, whatever. Since I had to tank, I lose a lot of HP. I do have sustain. I could do one or two camps, but better to spend my gold too. Uh oh. Okay, here's the range on my ulti. <laughs> Run away, guys. Ulti. E, auto, W, auto. Auto. <laughs> auto. Flash E. Auto. Wrong way. Ulti. <laughs> no way my ulti's back up. <laughs> Bro. This ain't right what I'm doing. That's a crazy flash. <laughs> uh, my ulti is back up again. That is so crazy. Back to base for me. Not enough minions to end. Let's get a last whisper. Then I'll be pushing uh, top lane here. Whenever you have Baron, you don't farm your jungle camps. You skip them and push a lane. You only have so much time on Baron and you don't want to mix and match. You know what I mean? So we'll be pushing top lane into that turret. Since the dragons are like, like, they're like this, we have two, they have one. The dragon soul isn't a factor since we're this far ahead. The game's going to end if I do everything right. So instead of like pathing bot, playing for that a little bit, I'll just play for top. It gives the enemy a choice to make a mistake on the dragon too. Do you guys want to start that bad boy and then lose? Go ahead. I don't care. Push, push, push. I think they're coming here. Hey, show me Jin, man. 
Why did I lose vision? My ulti's almost back up. I need some mana, man. I only have 100 mana. I can't kill this guy with 100 mana. Push, push, push. This is... This is something I didn't consider. Maybe I should have went Essence Reaver or something. I've never been out of mana on Nocturne Jungle. Push, push, push. And we don't want to take damage for free. I also deal a ton of damage to the turrets when I can hit them. But it's really up to your ranged allies to hit the turrets in spots like this. Okay, let's not spend mana. Okay. Outplayed. Outplayed. Let our team do stuff first. Nice. Nice. We 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 clicked backwards and then we won. Owned. Alrighty, GG. Final score 22 and 9. It's a normal game. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I have to boost the account's MMR. It's part of my job. Is this client going to load? There we go. Um, I would give the honor to the Teemo. And then if you guys want to see Nocturne with a skin as well, you can hit the um, thanks button. And if uh, enough people, I, it's basically like 20 RP for the ethereal skin. And I really like that one. So it'd be more fun for me at least to do the unranked to diamond with that skin. But bro, $20? Like look at this bad boy. Nocturne skins. Because this was one of the skins that I really liked when I started playing, but I just didn't play Nocturne at the time. This bad boy's 18. 1800, dude. You need, yeah, you need that much HP, or that much RP you want to purchase? Yeah, how much is that going to cost us? You have to buy $22 of RP? I'm good, personally. But, community effort, you guys want to see it. Then I'd buy this skin. Like we did with the Kane skin. But yeah, that's uh, the first game for Nocturne, unranked to Diamond. Uh, with the normal MMR boost, that will be the first normal win. So, uh, let's see. Unranked. Unranked? Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Makes sense. Does anyone have a rank? Platinum 3? Okay. So that's good. That's good that we beat a Platinum 3 player. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next match. Peace. Alrighty, welcome back to the jungle. We're gonna be game two of Nocturne Unranked to Diamond. We're still doing <laughs> we're still doing the normal MMR boost. So we are unranked. Unranked and playing into Kane. And then I'll be doing a much different build than the first game. Just to make every new player super mad. They're like, man, do the do the same thing all the time. Well, I'll be doing the uh Exact opposite of what we did last game. Instead of building full lethality to one shot, I'll be building uh, pretty tanky and then really brawling with the enemy. If you look at their team comp, they have pretty low damage <coughs> across the board. And what Conqueror does is that it gives us more HP as well as a mix of, well, it's a mix of damage and it's a mix of HP. And then the Green Smite gives us more HP. The rest of the runes, Triumph, Alacrity, Coop. And then Eyeball and Ultimate Hunter. Eyeball and Ultimate Hunter being the more snowball-y options. And then Triumph, more HP. Alacrity, more attack speed means more clear speed. Super important for basically every jungler. The more attack speed you have, the more jungle pets hits you get. And generally, just the faster the jungle camp dies. So, that one's super, super efficient. Even if you want to try to, like, argue getting the Legend Tenacity over it, nah. Sorry, man. The Coup de Gras kill, uh, kill the enemies when they're lower. Alrighty. And Decaying Jungle, too. There's there's a huge onus on him to really get things going in the early game. Doing anything. Like, if we both farm, that's fine. But then I have the initiative to have the first play. So, 
he can just naturally be behind if what he's doing is mostly farming. Alrighty, our jungle camps are done. Enemy jungle shows top side with 20 CS, so I'll do the scuttle here and then look to fight him on the top side because now there's actually some plays here. My mid lane's pushed in and I can try to gank Vigar and then I can cross through mid lane and then fight left side. Q, flash, auto, E, W, auto, auto, nice. Auto, auto. Since we autoed him, we get the slow from red buff, so I had a pretty good feeling that we could finish him off with the E. And we're just kind of spamming out the W, I'll be honest. <laughs> spamming out the W's. <laughs> Does bad boy work? About to find out. Well, I guess there's no, uh, no cane around here if we got both the scuttles too, so that's a great start. Full clear, scuttle crab, kill mid, scuttle crab. Not bad. And since I'm up here, I'll just keep clearing. Keep clearing the camps. There's nowhere super important for us to be. Moving Q. If you drag all of them into you, it really lines them up for that sort of Q. You want to Q, uh, you don't want to Q over the raptor wall though. If you do that, then the enemy can see it. And then they're going to know where you are. And as a jungler, you always want to remain hidden. So into our respawning blue side camps. All of this, the reason we're farming so much is that we're getting closer and closer to level 6. Once we're level 6, we have the real important plays. Even though we could maybe participate in that one if we skipped our camps, I'm good. I'd rather do a real play in which I fly onto the enemy level 6 and kill them. I'm kind of noticing I made a, <laughs> I made a mistake by doing blue buff first instead of the gromp. And now I have to wait for the gromp to spawn. So whenever you're playing a full clear jungle, if you do wolves into gromp and then blue, then you give yourself uh, a lot better timing on your second clear because the wolves will die, and then the Gromp will be spawning right in time. Nice. Alrighty, we're level 6. Let's spend our gold and go be a problem on the map. Who's with me? We're going to be going Stride Breaker. This is our best bruiser item easily. Stride Breaker gives you every stat in the game. Attack speed, AD. <laughs> AD, attack speed, HP, ability haste, passive that slows, or an active that slows them, that deals damage, and then movement speed for hitting the target. Amazing. So, now with our ulti, we're looking to punish anyone anyone that's overstepped, which Mr. Vigar is kind of getting nuts right here. Ulti, W, E, Q, auto, iron spike, auto. So anytime the enemy champion is halfway up the lane, that's a, probably a pretty good time to look for an ulti. Especially whenever the camps are down. Now once your camps are up, it's fine to be farming them even though your ulti is up. You don't want to reach for an ulti. You want to react with an ulti. Because if you're reaching for one and your camps are up, then you're going to be wasting your time. And you can't be doing that in the early game. It's too crucial that you build up the farm. And as a new player, that might seem boring, but it really keeps the game balanced. In which, if if you could just stand in a bush for, you know, two minutes and there's no consequences, that's a bit too overpowered for the laners. So this creates timings in which people can play around, especially once you get more experience. Alrighty, so our ulti is on cooldown. We'll be clearing our camps back to the bot side. All the meanwhile, too, this is giving us golden XP that is powering us up. Making us, one, tanky, two, deal damage, three, ahead of the enemy. All you have to be is slightly ahead of the enemy, then we're winning. Alrighty, I mean, well, my blue buff's coming up. I was thinking maybe skip these camps for dragon, but I don't have smite, so I'll keep farming.
Okay. These guys are getting ganked, but that's fine. We can always react to it. Goodbye to that guy. <laughs> Within seven seconds on my ulti. If I find the Vigar in his red side right here with just a ward, I can probably kill him. Same with this Lucian, actually. This will show you to be on screen, buddy. How dare you? Ulti, Q, auto, iron spike. Auto, 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 smite, auto. Please die. All right, let's push this wave. Level up, passive heal. Yumi will not be killing me today. We're good. Man, Yumi is so... You guys got two exhaust and a heal, and then Yumi's passive, and then another heal. Like, come on. I'm gonna be maxing the E second. Uh, let's do... Let's do... Ay, yeah, yeah. I could wait for Stridebreaker. Let's just wait for Stridebreaker. It's too strong. It's too strong. We can swap to Sweeper now. Basically, once you're past level 6, you can swap to Sweeper. Alrighty, so now with Stridebreaker, we have that active... It's going to deal damage and slow around us. Really, really plays in nicely with Nocturne. You land right on top of someone and then slow them and everyone around them to try to stay on them with the movement speed from your Q and the channel of the fear. Shut down. And then all the stats that's offered by this <laughs> item too really play into the Bruiser build where you can stay on top of someone and hit them a lot. Hit them a lot. Now it's 10 minutes, so we can try to look for the Rift Herald here. I'm much stronger than the Kane. And then Rift Herald will make it so that if I get a successful play, then we can get more gold for it. Taking turrets just generally gives you more of advantage on the map as well. The Rift Herald's super easy to do. Nocturne has so much attack speed and so much AD. Alrighty, so both mid laners went bot right here. So what I'm going to do is shove mid lane myself and see if I can't take the turret. We're going to wait for the next wave and then really hard shove. Nocturne has super good push on lanes. And then we drop the Rift Herald, baby. The Rift Herald will take the whole turret whenever it's at like 2 and about that much HP. Alrighty, so we got the mid turret. That gives us a lot of gold. Let's see if Illusion wants to be a dummy real quick. Do you want to walk into this bush? He does, he does. Welcome. Contestant number one, Lucian. Goodbye, contestant number one. Alrighty, let's see if they're on Dragon. In the early game, I, personally, I value the cheesy kills like that over like making sure they're not on Dragon. My farm, my kills, my minions, and then, and then the objectives. If we could get vision over here, I could easily ult these guys. Bit of a messy smite, my bad. Alrighty. Um, Kane got his form, but that's okay. We have 100 CS to 66. And then I'm really looking for an ulti on bot lane. All my camps are up though, so that kind of gives me a problem here. Skip the camps or not. I'll keep farming. Because we have to dive them to really have a play. And that would require Lucian and Yumi to play into my Caitlyn and Senna. And they don't have a great reason to do that really. Now that's a whole Malphite mid lane. As fun as it would be to ult him, it's super, it just takes too long. Even if we kill him, it doesn't matter, you know? What I want to do is farm these camps and get to the bot side faster. If we take bot lane turret, it actually matters. If I ult and kill this Malphite, it does not change the game state. Why? I don't get an objective for it. Alrighty, so uh, let's go into Black Cleaver as our second item. 
I'm not really sure what I want to get for my boots. They don't matter too much. Close. The Malphi could also be left side right here. There he is. Alrighty, Mr. Kane does not have a shutdown, but I guess I'll kill him. Ulti, Stride Breaker, auto, auto, auto. Here's how to kill Yumi. Well played. Alrighty, we killed the laners. It is time to take this turret. Past like 11 minutes, you can start trying to take turrets whenever you get kills. Malphite doesn't deal that much damage. Auto, 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 auto. Come back, Buster. No! As okay, nice. God bless Red Buff. We hit level 11, that's gonna give us two points in our ulti. I win this. Phew. Alrighty. Goodbye, Mr. Kane. I can't go over the wall. Level 11 gives us two points in our ulti, increasing the range, the damage, and lowering the cooldown. So let's go Merc Treads, I think. Gives us a little bit of MR. It's not too important, really, the tenacity. Tenacity also applies to things like Malphite's E, which slows our... Slows our attack speed, so it's, it's kind of whatever. I'm going to clear my camps up to, towards topside with the Rift Herald coming up um, soonest of the other objectives. So If you uh, farm into plays like this, then you won't fall behind in the early and mid game. But if you do a play first and that play goes wrong, then you skip all the camps for it. And even if the play is successful, do you get an objective for it? That's what you need to ask yourself. These guys are a bit screwed, though. They don't have a turret. Nice. Auto, cute. Ah, oh, she took my kill. Alright, and we're gonna get an objective for this bad boy. We're gonna hit this turret. Enemy forfeited. GG. Final score is 6, 0, and 3. Stridebreaker dealing 300, and Black Cleaver dealing 140. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. If I was the enemy team, I feel bad, just like the first game. I feel bad for killing them. This is the part of the unranked diamond that I just legit... There's always this part... I'm torn in two. I'm torn in two where... I feel bad for beating the new players, but then it's like, can I justify it in a sense that I'm educating other players? So it's like, uh, there's some vindication, I guess. Only three more wins in the normals, and then, you know, then we're actually in it, too. Alrighty. GG. See you in the next, uh, the next game. Bye. Alright guys, welcome back to the jungle. Game 3 of the Nocturne Unranked to Diamond. Still on the norm normal MMR boost. We, uh, I mean, at least we won the first two. Anytime you lose a game, it doesn't really change too much on the MMR. And whenever we win, it helps a lot. So, I made that part pretty easy, in my opinion. For anyone that's, like, actually higher rank playing on it. <laughs> playing on a newer account. I guess not even necessarily higher rank, just... Higher skill level. Playing into Lee Sin. Lee Sin is kind of annoying um, for Nocturne because he can get a lead early and then take over, but I don't think that would be the case uh, this game. And given the enemy team comp too, I mean, as per usual, we changed the keystone here. I'm not going to make it obvious for you guys at all, I guess. We're running Lethal Tempo this time, um, which I guess that's the extent of Nocturne's keystone options in these first three games. Electrocute, Lethal Tempo, and Conqueror, with the Lethal Tempo giving us more attack speed, comboing with the bonus AD, and if you can stay on a target and keep hitting them. So, with champions like Alawi, Lee Sin, Aurelion, there's going to be champions that won't instantly die, but if I go a more Bruiser build, then I also don't deal very meaningful damage to them. 
So, what I'll be doing here is kind of a mix. <laughs> we'll be going to clips. Clips giving us um, a mix of damage and HP. And then building out of the serrated dirk means I can also deal very good amounts of damage to the Ash and Karma without having to really itemize for it. And that will stick for most stages of the game. And then after that I can go Black Cleaver, which will do pretty similar things, giving me damage and HP, as well as a little bit of bonus damage from the item itself. So that's the general game plan here. Looks like me and Lee Sin are mostly clearing our camps. So let's do this scuttle and see if we can't get into bot lane. Because we do have Morgana's binding to set us up here. Morgana is going in, baby! The binding is going nowhere, baby! E, W, auto. Flash, auto. Auto. We want to flash early so that we don't waste too much time. Moving. Now, we don't want to push this one. Because this wave is bouncing back to my bot lane. Whenever a wave crashes, whenever a big wave crashes, a big wave will come back. And that's how you want to view it. Alrighty, serrated Dirk and back to the top side. You don't have to wait on Fountain for all of your HP as Nocturne. Our passive gives us quite a bit of sustain. So, just get back to the camps and heal that way. Whenever you kill the camps too, you heal based on your missing HP. It's not like you want to leave a 30% HP, but... The faster you get onto the map, the less time you're waiting in Fountain, the more impact you're having. We're back on these golems. Versus like a Nuba player, you know? That'd be where Olaf is. It'd be really interesting to see, too. It's a shame that the game doesn't function like this in a way. Like, Mario Kart has the ghost system whenever you do time trials, so you can see exactly where the other guy would be at the exact times. So you can see exactly how much slower you are than them. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to do that with at least Jungle Pass, because you can see a Nocturne be on golems while you're still in base. The faster you kill those golems, the faster they're back up again. The faster you can kill them again. Looks like Lee Sin's going back to his red side. So, we'll keep clearing. And, uh, it looks like Karma warded right there too, so... I could try to do the dragon solo right now. Let's do this. Let's do this. On to Karma. I'll just do Ash, listen. Take the easier one. No problem. Nice, Lee Sin's getting in there. Whoa, Nocturne is level... Ah, Aurelian's level 6, my bad. Ow! Sorty, sorty. Aurelian dropped a bomb on us. Double longsword. I'll get boots too. My team's gonna be crazy like this. Might as well benefit from it. Uh, let's go this way. Remember the karma warded right there. With, th <laughs> with respawning Scuttle and this Grop, I will hit level 6. The respawn Scuttle gives you a little bit more golden XP than the first ones do. You know, since that's warded, maybe I could get into this guy's Raptors and then try to get level 6 like that. It would put me in a flank position as well. It also doesn't present too much risk since I'm stronger than Lee Sin. Come here. Nice. I mean, I should have blocked the Q with my W. That wasn't too nice. Run! Oh, I don't have many places to go here. I got a blast going, I guess. Waiting. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Wait, there's no way. Since Aurelian flies into me, his fly is just on cooldown. Bye bye. <laughs> Let's take the Gromp on our way out here. This guy is bitten off way more than he can chew, huh? Oy, oy, oy.
Shut down. Alrighty, we're level 6 now, so now we have our ulti, and getting closer and closer to the Eclipse. If we complete the Eclipse like level 7, level 8, then we're really online. Oh, guy misses. I could choose to do Rift Herald right now, but it's just not too valuable. Rather farm most of my camps and then just react to a play. If all the camps are up, like, we have a pretty important responsibility to clear. Clear, like, all the camps whenever they're up, so. Oh, this guy is really pushing, huh? Thinks he's really hot stuff, huh? Ulti. QWE. Flash auto. Ah. Oh, smite this guy. Oh. Spell shielded his ulti. I thought I used my W whenever I landed. Guess not. Alrighty, I don't have any mana. Go back to the camps here. Yeah, whenever the enemy's pushing, they make it real easy. The higher you go, the more people start respecting a Nocturne ulti, but they really, really don't even know it's in the game in the lower ranks, so it makes it super, super easy. So, ulti's on cooldown. We'll clean up these camps and then look to get a reset. We're getting closer to level 8 too, and that's gonna... Again, whenever you get the levels and you get more, um, more tankiness for free. So even though we're building all offensively, we're gonna get our durability through our levels. Alrighty, let's reset. Houston's in the river. Do we want to fight him? Nah. <coughs> Eclipse. I'll go with boots, lucid <laughs> boots of Lucidity this time. More ulti sounds like more fun to me, honestly. And then Black Cleaver is my second item. Give me no some attack damage, HP, ability haste. <laughs> ability haste. And then some armor shred. As well as movement speed whenever you hit the target, which isn't useless. Man, Alawi doesn't even have a shutdown here. 10 seconds on the ulti, but I'd rather have a flank. Oh, I mean, that's the one way to do it. I'll go ahead and start Rift Herald here. It's about the only time that we'll have to do it. You wanna, you wanna fight, big man? Yeah, back up. Just kidding, you have a Aurelian Soul, I don't have my mid laner. All yours. He's got a fed Aurelian Soul with a crown. I won't be killing that guy. Not in time, at least. So what Eclipse gives you is this uh, 60 AD, 12 Lethality, and 15 Ability Haste. And then with the passive, giving you a, sh <laughs> giving you a shield <laughs> and dealing a little bit of extra damage to the target that you hit and giving you some movement speed. Um, and then that cooldown is uh, 6 seconds for it. So you have the ability to proc it multiple times. So you can get more value the longer a fight lasts too. Already nice. At least didn't die. So let's go ahead and try for Rift Herald. What is happening here? Ulti! QE! Nice. A big shutdown for us. <laughs> Aurelian Soul's ulti. Aggroed the Rift Herald. Sorty guys, sorty. Oh. If I'm going down, I'm getting the Rift Herald. Q, don't hit me, don't hit me. Oh. I got the Rift Herald, nice. 
Caulfield's Warhammer back, <laughs> back, back to base the manual way. Man. Enemy top lane takes my turret and then kills me. Man. He took the blast cone over the wall. Oh, that's a big Alawi. Luckily, we don't have to deal with her for a long time. Alright, so I mean, I got the Rift Herald, but I can't really use it now that I'm dead. The plan is, like, basically take it and then try to drop it mid immediately. So until Aurelian's uh, fly is down, I can't cast my ulti or he can just fly away. Phew. Oh! I just killed him with my Q, huh? I have to use my ulti like that. Well, I guess I can drop the Rift Herald now, but it's just for the turret damage. Can't really stay either, at least it kills me. At least we got a kill, go though. We got, we got our kills, we got some camps. 93 CS is okay. <laughs> But I need a whole lot more to carry this bad boy. The way that we're gonna get it is basically reacting to reacting to plays and spending our time efficiently. Bye bye, Aurelian. Because I still need to be siphoning these camps basically at all times, and then anytime the enemy attacks my allies, I really, really can capitalize on it. It's so much easier for me to join after the fight has been started. So, like, prime example these guys fought. My ulti's coming up, someone's gonna pay. Moving. Ulti! <laughs> so much damage. Alright, let's take this midding wave too. Laners don't like it when you do it in the early game, but whenever they're dead, do they even know I'm taking the wave? Nocturne is so good at just eating, siphoning the wave. That's really the only way you lose on Nocturne is by not just rinsing the map of all of its resources. Wringing it dry getting strong, and then fighting. 120 CS to 78, we're level 11, Deleeson's level 9. That's <laughs> that's where you want to be, and you get there by farming the camps. Right, we're just lucky we got that. We did not have Smite. Phew. Nice. What? Phew. Auto, auto. Auto, 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 W? No, I didn't spell show this kick. Okay, nice, we win. We dodged his Q, so he dies. I killed Lee Sin? How? What? Had to be red buff, but what? That doesn't make any sense. Alrighty, I'm still farming my camps. Allow it. No, oh, she's half HP. Just give me a second, Mr. Fizz. I'm coming in. Ulti. <laughs> as soon as we arrive, I feel like they just die. It's so weird to see the Eclipse shield. It's like so much for using the HP if they insta-die when I land. Here we look. Damage dealt 400, damage blocked 900. You're always going to be blocking more than you're dealing. That's kind of the dynamic of this item. But like, dude, weird. Didn't expect to be one-shotting people with this. Alrighty, Rift Herald's coming up. Clean up these camps. We can fight for that. Forgot to mention, we're level 11. That gives us more range on our ulti. If you look at the mini-map. Black Cleaver, um, are, and for my next, <laughs> my next item, probably this, honestly. If we get Last Whisper, that really helps me deal with the Alawi being so fed. 
Anti-heal helps me... Well, I guess it doesn't help me against Lee Sin. This is just to kill Alawi, the raid boss, the 8-kill champion on their team. So may the better... May the better uh, nuke champ win. But yeah, with level 11, that gives us more range on the ulti, more damage, and it also lowers the cooldown. Alrighty, so nobody's laning, so I might have to go defend top lane. They're like already going to be killing the enemy bot lane. Let's take this wave, and then maybe we help top later. Remember, get the gold first. If we farm into dying, at least we farmed. But if you die into die, like, it doesn't really help. I'm not sure, man. That guy's full HP. Nice, he's tanking. Alrighty, nice, good. Since Alawi hit me, then it makes it where she tanks. And since she tanks, like, that's so much added damage. Because we deal good damage, but it's pretty front-loaded. Not too bad. Get that. I almost I almost tried to use the warding trinket and I would have summoned the Rift Herald again. So we have one minute on dragon. I'll do my red side camps. That will allow me to complete my item, give me a little bit more XP, and then we'll be in business to fight for the dragon. One thing's for sure, Nocturne's not supposed to have three items before the uh, 20 minute mark, but here we are. Not too bad. Mortal Reminder gives us 40 AD, 30% um, armor pin, and 20% critical strike chance. Nocturne's passive can crit, so we got that going for us. He gets a lot of AD, so when we do get that those random crits, it's such a low percentage. Hold on. Q, E, W. Ah! Okay, we're good. Maybe I'm not good. Yeah, I'm good. I played that so bad. I keep A-clicking just like into oblivion, basically. Whenever you A-click, it'll just go eh, in surprising places. Alrighty, Raid Bosh, can we take him? We got five fellers. Jesus Christ. Dude. She's down. Nice, dude, I swear. You get quite a bit of crits whenever you build. Just a small amount of crit chance. This is Aurelian TP. I'm gonna be focusing the dragon. It's okay to ult him when I can, but it's whatever. I'm not gonna give up the position on dragon for it. Okay. Ulti. Hey, give me some vision. Ah! I I had- oh wait. Think, think. Nice. Come here, Buster! Q. I missed! Let me do my outplay button right here. ADC players be like. Reset. Rift Herald gives you that Empowered Recall, too. Not bad. I, I don't know where I want to go from here. Death Stance doesn't sound bad. Getting quite a bit of armor sounds really, really good, actually. Because even though they have this Aurelian Soul, um, most of the damage I'm going to be taking would be from Lee Sin, Ash, or the Alawi, since I dive in. So, having a little bit of armor, that builds into Death Stance. Or, we could do GA as well. Pretty good, and we've also built quite a bit of HP as we've gone here. Karma, you've you've crossed the line. How dare you? How dare you? Try to play the game, ridiculous. Let's drop Rift Herald mid.
Thank you. Boah, I thought you used my W right, I did not. Careful, partner. Alrighty, see now, whenever you take a bunch of damage and, and get, you know, just shit on, it's fine to walk away. Oh, do we have to stop the Alawi? 11 seconds on my ulti, not too bad. This is the boots lucidity like over and over again. I just have, I have like just enough CDR. Hello, friend. Oh! Oh, I really die? That's my bad. I walked right into her tentacle. That's just from her ulti, the, the tentacles go bang, bang, bang. No, not the Baron, come on, come on. Nah, but they get the whole Baron. Uh, I run the risk and uh, yeah, this is the price I pay. Should have paid, played it slower, damn. Getting punished in the normal game, it's not supposed to be like this. Supposed to be able to play like a total asshole with no consequences. Almost level 16 though. That will give us our ulti maxed out. And <laughs> even though the enemy has Baron, they're all pretty weak. Alawi is really their only strong member. So I think we're fine. Other than the lane Alawi pushes. Alright, let's kill this guy. We'll show him to exist. And then let's go deal with the raid boss. See if we can dodge the tentacle this time. She has QSS, which is not good for us. That means I don't have a fear. Already every champion on our team versus Alawi. Let's do this. And she's tanking? Don't mind if I do. Play it slow. Cute. Okay. Ulti's coming up. Karma, you've crossed a line by existing, and that's that's where you're really messed up. <laughs> Poor guy. Enchanters don't stand a chance. If you want to get some free food, things are going bad. You know, you can always eat an enchanter. Like, yeah, these, these like bruisers and tanks, they're hard for Nocturne to kill, but those are a team project. You can always just ult an enchanter and get a funny kill. Whoa, Nelly. That is really ambitious, brother. Well, now Ash will farm the wave. Waiting. What? She doesn't like minion waves anymore. I see. Oh! Could have had a karma. I need to get in here, honestly. An ally has been slain. Oh. Alrighty, dragon is all your guys, I guess. Because now if I dive, I'm just in a 1v3. Let's reset, spend our gold. This is weird. Mortal Reminder has reduced 500 healing so far. Death stance, and from here, we could try to just keep bruising it out with something like Maw. But that Alawi is so strong. Is there anything that I could get to help me against her? There's GA, which is so strange, but... And then to not buy magic resist seems pretty bad too. I don't know. I already have so many items against her that maybe we just do it normal here. E, W, Q, auto, 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 I'm kidding. Owned. <laughs> Entire team versus Alawi gone wrong. The Aphilios died too? Man. Ah, it's been the case in all the unranked to diamonds. 
It's only top lane noob champs like Alawi, Mordekaiser, Urgot. These are the champs that like I lose against. <laughs> but it's usually the case that I'm on a noob champ myself and we're just slamming numbers into each other. And it happens that the top laner has more numbers. Gorge. Come on, Alawi, stay. There we go. Ulti. W, E, auto, Q. You're kidding me. No. An Ash ulti. You're cheating. She had stare axe. What to do? What to do, man? <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is kind of lame for the scaling, too. There's no great items coming in here. We only get more points in our W. Kill him. You can move your character, Aphilios. You can move out of the Dragon Breath. Morgana Q. See ya. The only extra points we're getting is in our W, and that gives us bonus attack speed. 5% on landing the spell shield. That is not enough to help us kill a whole Alawi. This will show this guy to exist, though. Well played. If only the enemy picked nine, uh, nine Ash ADCs, then we'd really be in business. 30 seconds on the Baron. Can we make a comeback? Can we do what the people want? Oh, nice. Allow he's going bot. We might be able to. Hello, friend. Nice kill. Allow he's here. Kill everyone around Allow Who's with me? Nice. Q, W. Oh, I didn't W. Run away. Run away. Real champ. He's not ulting, though. Since we don't have Olaf, I'm going to go to Golems to heal. And then we'll be in business. Whoa, oh, my ADC is dead. IDK. Let's reset. Golems didn't heal me as much as I thought. No, Alawi is pretty weak to poke. This just isn't working, huh? Nice. Oh, the Olaf went in a little late. Ah. I did spin myself to go in, but I figured I'd be able to walk away, but the Ash auto attacks me, and then I'm just slowed. Nocturne only goes forward, he does not go backwards. Is there anything I could buy to help me against this? We need tank killing. It would be like all crit. That's the only thing I'm seeing. Like Eclipse? Oh, I could get Bork. Huh. I do have to auto quite a bit for Bork to get going. Maybe I should have... But if I do that instead of Death's Dance, I'm just dead. I don't know, man. What I need instead is better play, not these items. They don't save me. The items will reveal themselves. I don't need to seek them out. <laughs> Meanwhile, they are definitely getting barren. What? What are you, what are you? Nice. Olaf, this is supposed to be a team activity. You're just gonna do it like that? We're gonna lose. 
whenever she like whenever I go in right, Olaf has to go in. He has ulti and everything. He could have done the exact same shit right here. It just doesn't make sense. I'm going Bork, Bob. This Aurelian Soul isn't touching me. I'm going Bork. Give me some percentage HP damage, baby. I'm gonna need it. Some lifesteal too? Don't mind if I do. Would you look at that? It looks like we have a chance. They did Dragon instead of Baron. God bless. Alright, so with Blade of the Rune King, 40 attack damage, 25% attack speed, and 8% lifesteal. But the real shebang here is the passive Mist Edge. Attacks apply an additional 12% enemy's current HP physical damage on hit. To every single auto attack. And then Siphon deals a little bit of flat magic damage as well as giving you movement speed and slowing the enemy. Baron time! Is Baron time! Is Baron time, guys! It's time to do the Baron! Hey, man. This is the part I do not appreciate about the normals. Okay. Nice. Okay. Maybe if I ulted onto Aurelian, I feel like I had some time there, but I didn't go in. I just want to get any wave shoving that I can. Entire enemy team is topside, so I'm definitely not going to be contested down here. Probably recall. Oh my god. Uh, red pot, and this is a lot of enemies to dive into, I'll be honest. They clear a wave, then they can't win. Even with the black shield, I'm so screwed. Shit! Oh. Well, GG. Damn, I got the Baron. It's still not enough. Everyone's just dead. Whatever. No matter how hard you smurf, this does not help you be a top laner in noob, in noob elo. Ah, yeah, yeah. Alawi, Urgot, Yorick, the bane of my existence in these unranked games. But that doesn't set us back because whenever you lose the normal games, you don't lose like massive amounts of MMR. But whenever you win them, you really, really win. Final damage dealt way more than everybody else. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What rank are we at, boys? Unranked, okay. Unranked, okay. Emerald 2, I mean, that's not too bad. Emerald 2 is pretty good. Gold 3. Alrighty. Well, I mean, a couple more games to go. Hopefully just three more to get the five wins, and then we can start playing ranked here. Alrighty, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Alrighty, welcome back to the jungle. Auto, Q. Auto. Auto. I'll show you. <laughs> Alrighty, I guess I'll just start as Raptors. I'm not going to be contested. Playing into Evelyn, and since we had Blitzcrank, we invade level 1. That is just how it goes, and I guess the enemy is just totally screwed from there. Even if Evelyn verticals are red side, that's also totally fine. Generally, if you're on the bot side of the map, it's more valuable. That will change next season, but until then. Until then, we are going to be bathing bot until the day we die. Wah! That's my Q. Alrighty, so... Against Evelyn, it's a full clear matchup, where we both start off verticaling like this. 
It just depends on like how you can affect the lanes really. Because it will come a point in which we both full clear our jungles the same way. But for now, the main goal is like get resources, get as many resources as you can. Alrighty, so since they already killed the ADC, we'll just get right back to our blue side here. If we wanted to cross, cross through mid, there's not a guaranteed gank. Um, it'd be a waste of my time for the my top laner to come into my red side too. So we'll go ahead and give our red side camps to Evelyn if she wants them. And then clear our blue side camps. Being even in farm here is okay in a way. I would also guess that we're clearing a little bit faster. Nocturne sustain and the damage is just a little bit better in the first part of the game here. You do this sort of stuff too to an enemy jungler. Like, if they're not comfortable with it, then it definitely makes things, like, weird for them. And I think, like, through experience of invading a lot of junglers, that with whenever you invade them, then they're kind of more likely to make mistakes for one reason or another. So we see Evelyn there with 20 CS. So it looks like we're at pretty even pace, honestly. Uh, Evelyn's a real annoying champion, huh? If I had to guess, though, I have more HP. Guess we'll see. But hey, we're on the bot side, so I can uh, gank bot lane and then go to the scuttle. Since it's such a big wave and there's no wave coming, we have to fight on the wave now or else it will crash. So we want to try to punish the enemy for pushing the wave like this. Kill the easiest target. Auto. Nice. Alright, time to get the scuttle. Evelyn showed top, so I might have time to do the do the raptors as well. Die. Come on. Come on, we got places to be. 2 HP. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Alright, no raptors for us. Not this time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on, scuttle crap. Whose side are you on? I'm going to be going Stride Breaker this game, I think. Bruise this build out, because if we look at the enemy team comp, it's a whole lot of bulky guys. And we want to be able to deal some damage and take some damage. And may the better, more fed champion win. It's a whole lot of Nocturne. Slamming your stats into him. That's the part I liked whenever I was a newer player, though. These champions that are just... Slam stats into the other guy. My raptors aren't up yet, so I guess I'll just investigate, but like... Um, I mean, my invade on, on Evelyn's fine. It'd be better if I was here faster now that I'm thinking about it. Check the Gromp first. The Gromp <laughs> is up. Wow, and she's bot side, okay. Your blue side is mine. Because if she starts in her blue side, then she likely does blue into Gromp, so that'd be the first one to respawn. Alrighty, Malphite's out of commission top lane, so... Let's go ahead and clean up these camps, get level 5. We'll be good. This path's a little awkward, but it's okay. Raptors into golems into wolves isn't the most efficient thing, but here we are. Our whole goal here of getting to level 6. Once we're level 6, then the plays actually matter. If I was to do anything in between, it wouldn't really matter too much. If I tried to gank this guy, he'll fly away. If I tried to kill that Malphite when he was low, uh, even if I kill him, it doesn't really change too much. So instead, we farm. They get dragon. Okay. Anytime the enemy jungler does dragon when these camps are up like this, then 
they spend some time doing that instead of this. So they're exchanging their personal power for that. And it's like, deal. I'll be level 6. You won't. Go ahead and reset. There's no play bot lane. Ooh, there might be a play here. I just have to get into range. They will see me coming. It might be okay. Aw. Oh, the Evelyn hits level 6. You can still kill this guy. Nice. <laughs> he flashed. <laughs> and still died. So I ult in. IQ. Auto. E. Iron Spike Whip. Auto. I don't know what, what kills him as he flashes away, to be honest. Alrighty. So, we spend our ulti, Evelyn has hers up, um, and now our red side camps won't be up for quite some time because last time we did her blue side camps and then came back to our red side camps. So we have like two options here, we can do Rift Herald, we can, we can gank, or we can um, invade the Evelyn. But if I invade an Evelyn where she has ulti, that doesn't seem like a great idea. But also, if I'm there before her, then she's kind of screwed, I'm going to deal too much damage at the start of a fight, so I guess we'll see. Put a ward down right there, and then we're gonna wait for her on the blue buff. And if things go bad, that's too bad. And you don't wanna wait here too long, we'll wait Okay. Q, auto, E, auto. Good amount of damage, got our ulti. Q. And then we'll just keep doing this back and forth, I think. Keep an eye out on these lanes. The trail actually showed us where she was going, that's cool. Whoa, you smite? That's pretty crazy. W. Auto. Okay, my bad. My bad. Zed can walk past the wave and then just kill, just kill the Evelyn. I'm not used to that. I forgot we're in a normal game. You got him. It's a little delayed, but you got you got the gist of it, Mr. Zed. You got that. Alrighty, back to farming. My ulti will be up. That is a misplay, and then as you can see, uh what's the bad part of the minimap right here? That's right, all of our camps are up, man. Whenever you do a play like that and it fails. Ugh. So it's gonna go one of two ways, really good or really bad. And in this case, the really bad is that all of our camps are up. The really good is like, kill Evelyn, take her camps and Rift Herald and my camps, and it's GG. It was just my bad for over chasing. Evelyn shows bot side here, so we're gonna start the Rift Herald. Take this bad boy for, <laughs> for free. I don't know where she goes though. If I had to guess it would be her red side camps. So now with the Rift Herald, if there's any <coughs> successful play, then we can get the turret plates as well. Giving me and my ally more gold. You also get an empowered recall, which is not bad. Giving you more tempo on the map generally. Okay. I'm gonna save my ulti until he could fly away there. Now that we had a successful play, hey, we dropped the Rift Herald. Now we get more gold. We're gonna be maxing the E second, giving us more damage, more fear duration. Nice. Oh, found Evelyn. Alrighty, back to uh I'll do I'll do my Raptors and then No, I'm gonna do all my camps and then I'll reset. Listen, the ulti's on cooldown for two minutes. And that is my team's problem, not mine. Pretty uh pretty chill game, honestly. With these sort of team comps in in like high elo, you always just have this dread of like nothing happening in the early game, and then the enemy's champions just take over, like Aurelian Malphite. 
Evelyn. They're too easy to play, and then they have uh, like <laughs> they just get so much for free. It's so lame. Like I said, me not having ulti will be farming. These guys dying? That's my team's problem, not mine. <laughs> Bot lane hates me? Not my problem, man. I've coached so many low elo players recently where when their teammates ping them like that, it's like they, I don't know, they got stabbed or something. They, they have such a visceral reaction to it. Whereas I come from Call of Duty, so it's like so obvious. You just say, you're stupid, man. Fuck you. And then you move on, you know? Because almost every single time they ping you like that, you're in this logical state of thinking. And then you're going to think, like, maybe they have a point. No, man. They're sending emotional damage your way. They're sending emotional damage your way. And there's, like, no benefit to it. Anyways. We complete the Stride Breaker. That gives us a lot of stats. Gives us a lot of HP, AD, attack speed, and movement speed. And then we complete the Merc <coughs> Treads, giving us some magic resist, which isn't too bad. This tenacity is kind of whatever, since we have the Spell Shield. Um, it's mostly about getting the Tier 2 boots, so we have more movement speed. And then also... Why? Hey, man. That doesn't really help, now does it? What? This is so weird. Moving! Oh, don't tell me I'm dead. Okay. That was the 2v2 of all time right there. To the death, Mr. Turret. Okay. Mordekaiser's not gonna hit that turret. Well, I mean, they are primarily magic damage, so we could ruin the game real quick and, and then just itemize against that. I could do a Hex Drinker here. I've already built that ruby crystal, but whatever. Whatever, I got money like that. I can build random components when I want. I buy what I want, when I want. Rip. Okay. By the time I finish Gromp, ulti will be back up. And then I can kind of just move up on the map. Once you're up on the map, you can have a lot more opportunities. Whereas if you're on your side of the map, it's really up to the enemy to make a big mistake for us to have an ulti. Keep maxing that E. You also want to remember to use the Stride Breaker active whenever you're clearing. That bad boy deals damage. It won't next season, but it does now, so... <laughs> Try to abuse it. Alright, let's not ult the Malphite, but let's try to... Come on, Malphite, what? You don't like fight? You don't like turrets? What's the deal? Oh, I, he bailed so quickly, too. 118 on the Rift Herald. And yeah, Malphite's not our main target here, so we're gonna go to a lane where a squishy carry is at. We'll be farming everything in between. We complete our jungle item there, that gives us a lot more HP for free as well. Gives us a shield that will regen every now and then. All you have to think of the green smite as is just HP for free. Nocturne already gets a lot of HP for um, getting levels and killing the jungle camps, but that just adds to it. So with the objectives coming up too, um, if you use your ulti, then the ulti will be down for the objective. What is the... Come here, Buster. Cute. Auto. E. Come back. Auto. 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 Moving. Q. Close. Run. I mean, if Aurelian's better, he kills me, but... We got out today. Run. 17 seconds on Rift Herald. Whoa! Start this bad boy up. So since we didn't spend ulti, now if they want to contest this, we're really in there. And you want to use your W on the swing right here. W, and then that will proc the passive where if you block an ability, then you get bonus attack speed. 
helping you clear the rift yard just a little bit faster. What are you doing? The OK Google thing came up for me saying that. Kill the Rift Herald a little bit faster. Why would why would it come up? Close. Mr. Malphi, you want to keep pushing? You just spent ulti. Even if he has ulti, I can follow with mine. So, this guy's just too overextended. As you can see, he doesn't have a turret for about 17 years here. He's going to take a while to take out, but that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I can't chase just a Malphite. It'll take me too long. Good showcase of the attacks, people. But, like, this got me thinking. Maybe I'd just get Black Cleaver instead of this... Maul of Mount Morty. I want some damage, man. I already backed it. <laughs> That's why we built the Ruby Crystal. You thought the Ruby Crystal was the frivolous component? No, no, no. It's the Null Magic Mantle now. Give me some damage. I smacked that guy like 5,000 times. For nothing. Alrighty, Dragon's up. Let's skip our camps. We're strong enough to fight, so... Whoa! Noob alert. Don't ulti just yet. Nice. Don't ulti just yet. It's a weird Malphite TP. Don't ulti just yet. Notice how we don't have a team fight? Don't ulti just yet. There we go. Q, E. And he took my target. And my attack speed's been slowed. And I'm getting owned. Come here, Buster. Ah, uh, ay, 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 If I flash the bubble, I think I win. Because I kill Malphite and get Triumph. Dude, I'm getting bump, bump, bing, bump. Let me move. I have the Black Cleaver, though. Black Cleaver gives us 50 AD, 400 HP, 30 ability haste, and then gives us armor reduction up to 30% whenever you're wailing on someone. It also gives you more movement speed whenever you're hitting someone. Um, pretty similar to the Stride Breaker. And then in, into Mob Malmordius for us. Since they have AP damage on top lane, jungle, mid lane, and support, and the enemy ADC is a non-factor, then we'll just go another magic resist item here. Make things pretty difficult for them. Mob Malmordius uh, gives you 65 AD, 50 magic resist, and then upon taking damage, you gain a magic damage shield and get extra lifesteal. And since we have so much attack speed built in here with the lethal tempo, or W, stride breaker, then that lifesteal is pretty easy to utilize. Honestly, what I want to use my W on the most is that Malphite's E. Whenever I went in, I wasn't... A, like, I had so little attack speed. Like, Malphite, ult me, go ahead, but just please don't press E. I won't be able to hit nobody. My champ won't do nothing no more. My funny guy got a right click to deal damage. <laughs> <coughs> well, I do have this Rift Herald. 17 seconds, I guess we gotta drop it mid. Drop it back here, pretty far back. Give it some time to move up. And then I'll move up the map here. Try to be in position to hold someone. Whoa! I think this is fine. It's not fine. My bad. Sorry for the misunderstanding. I could try to heal off the camps. Nice, Evelyn goes top. Well, she doesn't have ulti, but like, I don't have any HP. She has a whole Nami behind her. Nice flash by him. Moving. You can't catch me. You're too slow. Yeah, that's a good flash because she doesn't have ulti, so she has no other escape. And if I keep staying on her with the fear, she'll die. <clears throat> Push it in, brother. 
Honestly, I'm flanking you, brother. Just give me a second. That's a crazy TP, but hey, the more the merrier. He's gonna Q me? Stride breaker, Q. Nice, we W'd his E, we win. Owned. Get a billion attack speed instead of getting our attack speed slowed. Alrighty, let's reset. Get that Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker, like the minor form of the Maw, giving you a spell shield whenever you're low. The spell shield needs to matter. That's usually where it's tricky to build Maw because you'll be taking every other type of damage. So, it'd be better to build HP in most cases. But in this case, since they're all magic damage, having a magic damage d shield is not bad. Combo that with our 2700 HP, our green smite, our spell shield, our ability to heal with our uh, passive, then yeah, we got a whole lot going for us in terms of HP. If a fight's good, I would say Nocturne has like what? 3500 effective HP? We can start playing around Baron too. Once my camps are done here. Nice. Honestly, ult the Malphite. Ulti! E, Stride Breaker, Q, Flash, Auto. Why does he keep ulting? The one guy I'm on. Stop doing that. Alrighty. Oh, nice pull. Nice. Ready, let's do Baron. Whenever you're fighting like that, careful with spinning your smite. You always want the smite for the objective. Alrighty, good fight. We are not doing this very fast, huh? Oh, we could have waited for Zed. Whoops. We get the Mob Mount Mortius. Now, since we're past level 13, too, we can start maxing the W. Every point in the W gives us bonus attack speed for blocking a spell. Not bad. Not bad. I wouldn't even mind ulting this guy. Taking Malphite off the field for a while. It's gonna leave. Malphite, come on, stay and play. I dare ya. Stay and play. Come on, get scared. Stop your recall. Uh, despite bullying him uh, by talking to myself, he didn't follow my orders. I'm looking for an ulti into their jungle, knowing that the Malphite has recalled, but I'd be going by myself, so. Let's start the dragon. This is dragon soul for them if they get it, so. We need to pull this bad boy out so that Evelyn can't randomly ulti it. And then, let me try our best from there. Evelyn shows, we're in business, baby. Might. Don't dive just yet. Don't dive just yet. Stop doing that, Mordecai, sir, damn. I guess I'm killing Nami. Bro, no one's dying. Oh, if I had my W up. Damn. I survived for so long. <clears throat> A little bit of spirit visage to round this bad boy out. Like, it's pretty cheesy and lame, but what? <laughs> I'm bruising out like a tank build in a normal game for unranked diamond on Nocturne. Is this really the best way to go about this? Uh, shouldn't I be building some damage? What damage options do I have though? Like, these items kind of suck. There's Spear of Sojin. That's alright. Seems a little late for Spear of Sojin. Could've got that as my third item, for example. You don't need anti-healing. I don't know, man. To be lame or to not be lame. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Just carry the game. We enjoy watching whatever you play. Thanks, man.
a bunch of guys up there. My Ballin's got the right idea. They still have Baron. Not even consider this. And they're pushing with it. My team's doing the right thing. Honey, check it out. Ulti. Did not stay on that damn thing. Where goes my bot lane? Where is this possibly coming from? Sorty, bye bye. It's a conversation between junglers. If you don't speak the lingo. Two minutes until Baron, kind of a lull state until then. Meanwhile, too, deaths in between these like time frames don't really matter. What matters is like you waste your ulti or die before the objective's coming up. Alrighty, here it comes, brother. More HP. Whenever you're building like this spear visage, too. Spectral Cow kind of sucks, so don't do nothing. Kindle Gem gives you 10 ability haste, so. And then 50 HP, so at least it's worth the upgrade. 150 HP regen, like, when you get hit. Who cares? Not me. I'm in a position like right here. It'd be way better if my team was on the top side. It's just too easy for Mordekaiser to get three manned. And it's like too hard for me to dive after the fact too. Because they have all this peel with a Nami ult and shit. I mean my ball lane's farming, it's whatever. My Varus has the weirdest build I've ever seen. It's whatever. Oh, hey! Trying to hover my mid laner. Come back, Buster. Goodbye, Buster. The Evelyn always has Nami behind her. It's a pretty lame dynamic for me. Now I can frontline for Varus here, finally. Maybe find the Evelyn in the jungle. Found her. Cute. Nice. Where's my team? Oh, see ya. My Varus and Blitzcrank were right here. I go there. I find Evelyn. They go to Dragon. We can do Dragon later, guys. You should play for the objective. In a normal game? Are we sure about this? Some mechanics right there. The Varus built 8P as well. So you think he'd have a chance against Malphite here. WQ. He's just dead. What? bit of a miscommunication there these sort of plays I feel like I do wrong even in high elo but the play becomes wrong because of like allies interaction if they follow me it feels like it's fine and then if they don't I'm totally screwed and then if I did nothing it would have been better so like especially whenever I'm turbo climbing my play style becomes something like holding idle holding neutral stance and then I win, but anytime I choose or force like that, then I 
almost instantly fucking lose every time without fail, for better and for worse. So it makes it pretty obvious. Like, Universe makes that part pretty obvious, at least. <coughs> Let's group up and do an idle neutral stance. Who's with me? Now, I haven't been farming for a while, but I'm just missing a spirit message because of it. Whatever. This guy is on one, huh? <laughs> Back and forth. Mordekaiser. Stop doing that. Nice. You can stay on top of Evelyn Nami for sure because they can't kill me. I have the Maw. Oh, my team's pushing forward. We should do Baron. Dude, my champ sucks right here. Aw, oh, nice, uh... Think you can't kill me. Apparently I can't kill you. I can't reach her because the damn Nami spells gives her extra movement speed. Let's try to heal off a camp. She could just come kill me if she wanted to. You know, every time I say heal off the camps, it's not too crazy. I won't go back to full HP, that's for sure. If I had like a refillable potion, I could. I mean, let's follow the play down here because it's gonna keep going. That can be fine. We'll see. Nice. Seems like that guy's gonna get owned, but I think I have enough time to take a turret here. I don't. Malphite's recon. I gotta get out of here. Okay, we got enough for spirit visage anyways. Recall, wrap this bad boy up. Do a real fight for Baron. And in the game, never before seen gameplay. A little bit of that. Give me a longsword, man. I'm feeling like I don't deal damage. I'm feeling insecure, like, I'm just not who I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be the guy that one-shots the fucking noobs, but instead I'm playing Bruiser Nocturne in a normal game. On an unranked account. Like, for sure the Diamond games would be easier than this. Without question. Oh, my team's playing for Dragon, that's right. Dragon trumps Baron in low elo. I forgot about this. It is a Dragon Soul, don't get me wrong, but... In general. This one's fine, this one's completely fine, just in general. Nice, I W'd his E. We win. Eventually. Nocturne, you're really... Er, <laughs> Mordecai, you're a really cool guy with that funny ulti. Nice. That is big, though. Malphite's a big tool for them. Alright, pulling the dragon out is not an option. Nice, that was too close. Ah, come on! Be a noob. Phew. That was kind of close. He's the only 80 damage on their team. Alrighty, let's end this. Six seconds on Malphite. Not sure if he has ulti or not. We don't have a wave! Guys, we can't end. We don't have a wave.
Eight seconds on my ulti. Nice. Oh, new blur. Maybe I'm the noob. Oh. fights up. Put that funny turret for me, man. I'm distracting the big man. Nice. Expect- No! Come on! Oh, I'm distracting the big man. Alrighty. All you. I'll use that. You got this. Oh, we had it. And the inhib response. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna use the bathroom. And we're back. At this late stage of the game, the best item you can get basically always is going to be Last Whisper. Last Whisper gives you percentage armor pin. <coughs> percentage armor pin. And everyone at this stage of the game has like level 18, so they have higher base armor. And then the Last Whisper helps you get through that and actually deal damage. If you've ever built like six just flat AD <laughs> items at this stage, then wonder why you don't deal damage anymore. It's always about those percentage damage increases. You can get those in different ways too, like fork and things like that. All right, we're just waiting for Dragon to come up. <laughs> Pretty hard to dive in solo. Wow, I like instantly died. The Aphilios like one shots me, huh? Like everyone's getting one shot by him, huh? I didn't have to ult the Aphilios either, I just thought it would be an easy target. Man, man, man. Hmm. And now we wait for Baron to spawn. We have another chance at a fight, at least. That one was a pretty good opening, too, if Malphite's dying for free. I have 118 armor and then 193 magic resist. Kinda makes sense why this guy is just owning me. Since I got the ocean soul, we can go for mortal reminder. This guy has no follow up. He's dead. Tried to help out with the ulti. This.
Damn, I think they win. Oh, I need to flash that. Just gotta do our best going in there, start a fight, and then let a better team win. Oh! It's our best friend here. Is the game delayed? I think so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what a weird match. It's still just all of Philio's like one shot at me. I'm not sure what to do about this. I could change these for Ninja Tabby, but I don't have the gold. Ay, ay, ay. So what we want to do now is push this wave, and then probably push the next mid wave and get in position for Baron. If you don't push these waves first, then it's too easy for the enemy to just try to end or have you in a worse position. This is dangerous. My team is not with me. Nice. Oh, I can't even go on Aphelios. He's too strong. He's half HP. It's just not going to work. I mean, we're losing this standoff over time, too. This is rough. That is, unless Blitzcrank lands a hook. Land a big one for us. Not that guy. Oh! Run. Like, I get so owned by the Aphilios. Guys, I got Ninja Tabby now. We can win. Man, I actually lose two normal games, huh? GG. <laughs> GG, man. What a weird match. Alrighty, see you in the next one. Peace. <coughs> Welcome back to the jungle. Game 5 of Nocturne unranked to time and I've lost two normal games on the normal MMR bo <coughs> boost here but I still gotta win three here we go we're into Zach jungle so we're in that lethal tempo with most of their champions too they're very much bruisers and that really has me thinking if I should just go Bork because I know Bork, Bork is just so effective against those type of champions and it's not like it's a bad item for uh, <coughs> for a jungler to have either I've just not seen it on a Nocturne, but I guess we could try it out. Eclipse feels fine, but it definitely doesn't feel like it's mega juiced. It then help me, like, quite literally 1v9 the game. So I think that's what I'll be doing, building Bork and playing for, um, mostly mid and, mid and top lane. Bot lane is whatever, a Yone versus, a Yone Ari versus, yep, that, whatever. With, so like those things are nice too, those game plans are nice, but what's really important is that I simply get more farm and get more kills than Zack. That's all I have to worry about. Oh yeah, yeah.
So far, so good. Nothing to really see here. Looks like my bot lane's having a good time. Standing on top of the trail from the Q is important, but it's also not mega necessary. Because where I could queue the golems right there and then pull them into me, it's a lot more useful than having the extra AD and then waiting. Having the, <coughs> having the speed getting to the camp faster is going to be trumping that. Now I think Zach will be on the bot side here, but I don't want to enter through the tri brush because the enemy bottling could collapse on me. So we'll do it like this. I'm surprised Zach isn't here. I'll go ahead and check the topside scuttle as well. Definitely a slow game, but I mean, that's fine with me. The way the other games have been going. Really, the topside scuttle's up. Interesting. Step one, clear faster than Zack. A massive success so far. Looks like we can gank Volibear too. Onus is on Volibear to crash. Let's stop him from doing that. An ally has been slain. An ally has been slain. A good amount of damage. Not gonna be a kill this time. Let's get back to our camps. Leafy or with a better lane state. Volley Bear was playing pretty cautious. And we don't have a ton of time to just wait around for that either, so I'm gonna do the play and then go to the next thing pretty quickly. Nice. So we gank top lane and it's back to our camps. We can basically clear all of our camps. Because Zach tried to kill bot lane and then spins his passive, spins <coughs> spins his time down there. So in the meanwhile, he's probably like walking back to his golems. And I'm done with my Gromp and Wolves. So we have that pacing. <coughs> we have that pacing on him. Really, you go top, okay. So since he goes top and Bard goes top, we're gonna be taking his blue side. Getting these two camps just gets us closer and closer to level six, which is where everything really comes online. We save our smite <laughs> right here so that we can have it for this gromp. Cute. Nice. Alrighty, and we are close, super, super close to level six here. I'll go all the way back to, <coughs> to golems. My diving Aphilios? No. Is the scuttle up yet? No. I'll be going to golems. It's a bit of a jank path. And then with this, I'll be level 6. Level 6 before recall, and then basically before 7 minutes too is not bad. And then I want this spot side scuttle too. This this is the respawn scuttle. We still haven't recalled, but I want all the farm I can get, man. 56 CS to the Zax 37. Let's just keep making that worse and worse. It's like jungle pathy. No, no, no. Me just walk around and kill the camps. That's yeah, much better. We have smite up, so don't have to play this game with this guy. Okay. Ulti, W, auto, auto, auto. Nice. Whoa. He E passed my Q. 
Alrighty, not bad. <laughs> Silas took my ulti, walked right past me, and then just ulted bot lane. What's the deal? Does he not respect me? Am I not a respectable guy? Just acts like I don't exist. Alrighty, so that gives us a ton of gold. Like, we farmed so much, and then also got the kill. Well, we got two assists. So that gives us a bunch of gold. And from here, our jungle camps are back up. It's just back to business, clearing these bad boys. But we have the pickaxe, the vamp scepter, and the dagger. All of those is just basically more damage. That more damage is going to speed up our clear. The more camps we kill, the faster I get to, like, level 9. Try to help this guy out. Oh, he really flashes? That fast? Damn. Set up those minions for Fiora. And then I'll just go back to my camps. <laughs> Alrighty, we're back to farming. Send this bad boy to the bot side. And then look to ult the squishier targets. Although I do want to play for top and mid lane. Whenever uh, my camps are up and, you know, I'm on the top side, we're just going to end our clear bot side. But we can always walk back to the top side after that, so it's not like you have to gank bot lane just because your clear ends there. But with our ulti on cooldown and the camps are up, we're going to be going to the camps. Jeez, you are kidding me. These guys overreach like I've never seen before. Close. I can actually keep chasing this. Top scuttle is up. Bard, come back. So, since we did that, we skipped our red side camps. So, back to doing <laughs> whatever camps are closest, basically. Kill the scuttle. Where's the next camp? Calculating. Kill Rift Herald. Kill the camps. You can use your W on the big swing right here. If he ever does the big swing. W! And that gives us more attack speed. Zach just keeps ganking and we keep farming. And then stay tuned to figure out how, why this becomes a big, big problem. For Mr. Zachary. Q. Auto. Auto. A. 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 <laughs> Run! Hey! <laughs> bye bye. Let's take some raptors on our way out. A little snack. Give me a little snacky snack. <laughs> Insta recall with the Rift Herald of Mana if I do, and just like that, bang, we got the Bork. A little bit of Bork, and then I'll buy a Ruby Crystal. Buy a Ruby Crystal, probably turn this into a uh, Black Cleaver. We could still get a Mythic on him, honestly. We could still get Eclipse. It's so weird. Honestly, maybe I should just get the Eclipse, because, yeah, it gives me, uh, gives me that tank-killing passive in a way. I could also just go another on-hit item. Let's just play it by ear here. See where we get. Zach takes dragon, oh mercy me. I'm level 9 and he's level 7. Do you see how this is a problem? I have 93 CS, he has 57. And then like all things Nocturne, basically whatever item we build, we're still getting AD. And we're going to be killing the camps at pretty much the same pace. I have no clue. How did my bot lane take bot lane turret? Yon Ari, what is going on? Oh, easy kills, huh? Ulti. Nice. Just walk right into us.
Mr. Nocturne. I really wish that the Zac would gank mid lane right now. That'd be very cool for me. As I finish these red side camps, I could just walk right into them. He's not going to do that. <laughs> as he shouldn't, but that's a bummer. Next play for me. Bard shows top, so I can move into this guy's blue side pretty safely. Nice, and then we can flank the Aphilios. Hopefully... Oh man, Q. Smite. E. Auto. Auto. A. 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 Outplayed. Let's go ahead and drop the Rift Herald here. Yeah, this was probably worded where he backed up. It would have been better if I flanked all the way around. From like here, and then all the way around there. Nice. Let's keep pushing. No one's gonna stop us. Don't mind if we do. <laughs> Little 14 minute in him. In hip turret. Don't take that all in him. Don't take that all in him. Okay. They took the hole in him. No way that that Rift Herald slams the base turret. What in the world? What is going on? I guess I'm pushing with him. This is how I win the normal game, but I fight for my life in the other ones. Kind of waiting for an ulti. We have minions coming. I don't have the resources to really stick around in the fight, so... Play on the outskirts and then bail when it's time seems fine. Um, if I can do wolves, I can get some mana so I can actually help this guy. Okay, reset. Let's actually go long here so that our recall doesn't get stopped. Alrighty, and for our next funny item, hmm. I'm gonna say I just think Stridebreaker really bruised this build out as per usual. They forfeit? Deal. Short and sweet. Final score 3 0 and 6. Fork dealing 700. Well, like those other normal games, 40, 30, 40 minutes. Big, big investment of effort and time. And then this one, just a little walk around, kill him. Just a little bit of siphonous camps and the Yon and Ari bot lane will win. Don't mind if I do. Alrighty, GG. See you in the next game. Alrighty, welcome back to the jungle. This uh, Vi is Diamond 4, that's a good sign. That's why we do the normal MMR boost, baby. So if this guy's Diamond 4 and then we win, big. We are on game 6, so we've won 3, and we've lost 2. And we're looking to win 2 more. And then if we do that, then our MMR will be a lot higher whenever we start our unranked to Diamond uh, climb. And <laughs> it's not necessary to do, but whenever you're smurfing like this, then it really speeds up a process in which you play against higher MMR for longer, but you do it sooner, so then you earn more MMR per game, basically. But anyways, we're playing against Vi. Both of us are going to be full clearing to the bot side and then fighting it out like men, as you should. And whoever the better man is will win this time, so... I do like this matchup. I think it's more favored for Nocturne because we have a spell shield. Where it gets tricky is that neither one of us can really pull the trigger in the mid or late game without the other one just being able to own. Because like Vi ults in, I can fear her. If I ult in, she can ulti me. And then the things get really, really lame and tricky. So, you have to wait for a pretty good opportunity to go in rather than 
basic ones. With all the lanes too. Very nice that uh, we don't have any Onus to really gank other anywhere other than bot lane. We have Caitlyn and Morgana in the bot lane. And whenever you have a Caitlyn, you really want to make sure that you fight with them in the early game. Caitlyn is so dominant in laning, and if you don't play with her, then you don't exacerbate that fact, but you also run the risk of her messing up and then die and then dying. And whenever Caitlyn dies, it's over. She never catches up. She just keeps losing perpetually. We'll be full clearing down there. It is up to them to ward right now against the Vi's early ganks. Because I can't be skipping my camps preemptively for that. Looks like mid lane dies. Hmm. Ari with that much HP? Nah. Because if I gank Ari and kill her, then that still opens up my bot lane to be ganked by Vi. I'd rather take the honest fight down there. We're finishing up the clear now. I'll go ahead and smite this just so I can be in position sooner. Looks like things are good though. Vi's not showing on the tri brush ward, so I'll go ahead and do scuttle and then maybe even flank bot lane. With the only timer that we really have to worry about is the golems respawning. Wow, Vi is topside. Go ahead and put a ward right there. She has 24 CS and a longsword. Which means she ended her clear on the bot side, and then reset. Alright, there's nothing here, let's reset. Our golems are respawning soon. <laughs> I didn't consider what we're buying. Uh, I'll get a pickaxe and figure it out later. Probably just stride breaker. You know, our invade might be okay on Tavai as well. I didn't consider that, where I probably clear <laughs> my red side faster and then could try to get into her red side and just kill her on red buff, for example. That would have been pretty good. Because that would still put me in position to protect bot lane. But it runs a risk. <laughs> this guy really chases, huh? Q, W, E, auto, 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 auto. Oh yeah, flash? As if. As if. Owned. Max range Q. Owned. It's a very weird gank. It's weird that she had blue buff. I'm weirded out by her path. Anyways, let's clear the bot side. Since Irelia was fighting like that, and Vice stays there, for more than like one rotation of abilities. That's what gives me the sign to then move in and try to do something with that play. If I was already backing off, it'd be very bad to move from here to there rather than just passing to my camps. Wow, and she goes for another one, I see. Mr. Talon, he can flip away, he's fine. So Vi's level 4 and we're level 5. If I can get into her jungle, then I can easily kill her. It's just a matter of like getting there and getting around the wards. My bot lane's pushed in, that's not good. So, I mean, here we are. Yeah, odds of bottling being warded here is pretty high. Whoa! Did not expect that guy to be there that soon. It's fine. It's fine. We don't have to commit to anything, really. Q. W. E. Auto. 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 <laughs> Lol. Auto. 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 Flash. Ah! 
Oh, I got hit by the Q. Man. Close. It sucks that they really chase, too. Okay, let's see. Stride breaker. Stride. Stride breaker. Bing, bang. And then back to the top side. One thing with pathing bot 2 in this matchup is pretty easy. I'm not ganking Malphite, you know? I'm not ganking Malphite, so... Imagine pathing up to a Malphite. Is he standing under turret? Damn, we can't kill him. Is he pushing my top laner in? Damn, we can't kill him. Alrighty, and just like that, we're level 6. Now, I have a feeling that Vi would be in her blue side. That's how she played it last time, so... Maybe I just wander into the river here. If I find her, then I definitely kill. And if not, then I could always start Rift Arrow. Vi likes to do objectives, so... If you take them off the board, it really, like, forces her hand, in which her good plays become... Um, force a gank. And that's it. Force a gank. That's all she can do. I'll go ahead and start the Rift Herald right here. You only want to use the first um, rotation of your E on the Rift Herald. Do a little bit of extra damage. I probably shouldn't have even used my Spell Shield. Because you want those abilities to fight. They don't really enhance your damage too much onto the objectives. They don't speed it up enough because they're on such a long cooldown the spell shield's on a 20 and then the e is on a 15 Christ. they said you get to cast these abilities once make them count all right we got rift tailed so now we have the empowered recall and whenever we get a playoff then we can take uh take more of the turret and with caitlin morgana that becomes super super useful i just need one successful play we could probably take the whole bot lane turret Meanwhile, we're out farming the Vi 65 CS to 54. Nice. Oh, I shouldn't have smited. Why, she kills Vi too? Lol. <coughs> Alrighty. Enemy jungler dies topside. You know what's up. We're taking that dragon. This is why I shouldn't have smited. Ah! Okay, thank you. Auto, Q, auto, nice. This guy awake. Go ahead and drop the rift tail. Q. You can't really do much other than throw the Q. Oh! Sorty, sorty, Q, auto, auto. Going. Oh man. The enemy mid laner just walked at me. My bad. Ooh. Close. Shut down. Go ahead and swap the sweeper back to the top side. Welp, I killed the zillion and I didn't get dragon. Worth? And I got roamed on by the mid laner. Worth? So whenever you do a bad play like that too, um, it's back to the camps and farm. Just like winning, back to the camps and farm. Losing? Back to the camps and farm. Um, honestly, against their team comp, I'm going to be maxing W second. It reduces the cooldown and gives you more bonus attack speed whenever you're fighting. This guy doesn't have ulti. Nice. Hello. Talon can flip-flop all around the place here. Kill this guy. Come on now, kill this guy. Ari has walked away from me. But I used the power of, uh... Oh, not my spell shield, that's for sure. Q, ulti. I missed my Q. Alrighty, back to base for us. We're in a bit of a extended position. I'm gonna have to head home. There's a bunch of weird guys at this party, I'm gonna have to... Leave the party! Merc treads, let's... Successful play, back to farming. I almost just died, back to farming. I woke up today, didn't brush my teeth, back to farming. Nevera's is 
Beating them all, huh? Wait till I come down there with my R button, buddy. So, going into 14 minutes here, we're looking to end the laning phase for one of the lanes, and that's probably going to be bot lane. This is a bunch of minions for me. So we'll be pathing down there and really saving our ult for, for the bot lane itself. And if we can get one ult, we can take that whole turret. At least if Ari and, Mor and Zillion and Vi, at least if, if their entire team lets us. My mid lane generally losing, you never... Morgana, that's mine! What's the deal? Farm, farm, farm. Farming's done. Oh, Kaelin could have taken that turret. Okay. And now here I can solo ult the Varus once he comes to contest us. If he comes to contest us. Oh, he does have ninja tapping to be fair. Nice. And he's level 9. I don't know, man. I'm looking to get a kill at least or something. If they keep chasing mid, then it gets a bit rough. And I want to stay around bot side. Will soon fall. So I can nail the Varus. Nice! That's what I was waiting for. He has a chance to be in the bush. Or if he's under turret, I can still ult it. And now we take the turret. This is how you end the laning phase, baby. Ugh. Guy is always. This guy is always in a weird spot. What's the deal? SMPs. W. Um. Honestly, just a, just a very standard black cleaver here will do the job, because even the Varus has Ninja Tabby. Malphite and Vi are going to be targets that I'll have to hit sooner rather than later, and they get pretty tanky as we go, so black cleaver just covers a lot of bases. It's not super useful until the completion, though, so we continue farming, get to level 13, get a black cleaver, and then we're truly online. In the meanwhile, if any fight goes our way, really, especially forced ones, they were really juiced. But there's no huge onus on, on me as Nocturne right now. We just keep farming and let the game come to us. Run. Don't team fight the Malphite Vi. Caitlyn's like petrified of the Varus. Oh, he's just not in the game, I see. Well, we fought topside and won. Since Caitlyn's not in the game, I'll just take bot wave. We're level 11 now, that gives us two points in our ulti, giving us more damage, more range, and a lower cooldown. If you look at the mini map, that's our range. Not bad. And then, like, here's what it looks like, you know, moving our camera. It's pretty long. It's another reason why I want to continue that pattern of, like, mostly farming in the early game into the mid game. Because you only get faster at farming in the mid game, so you keep doing it. And then that's what gives you your tankiness. It's what gives you your, like, power. So your attack power, too. So where's the downside? Other than, like, I'm not fighting 24-7. Owned. You got any jungle camps? Phew. Run! Please don't stop my recall. 
I'm juiced. I got the black cleaver all in one. I said don't stop my recall. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What was that? Don't forfeit. I can carry. I need a normal win, guys. Don't FF. Kate is coming back. Just lie. Alright, black cleaver and then... And then I'll go another HP and AD. There we go. Spear of Sojin. That's what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for. Talon says go next. Don't worry, man. We got this. So we want to continue gathering the resources here. It's not so much about ulting in. Ouchie mama. It's about if these jungle camps are up, then they die. It's about taking a good fight. Because that, that Varus is juice. He has Kraken Slayer, and he has... Gotta, <laughs> gotta mute all fast. He has Kraken Slayer, and he has a Bork. So... And he's level... Oh, I thought he was level 14. God bless. It's only level 11. And he has a zillion. Don't forget about that part. Might be able to get involved here. My ulti range is pretty far. Nice. Nice. Delivered all the way across the map and then bang into the Rift Herald. Nice. Perfect. W block. Get the attack speed. Smack, 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 smack. I swear, whenever I build Bruiser, I really like to do it like this though. Like three AD and HP items. Going like any sort of individual stat one seems outdated, unless the team comps really give it to you, which they very rarely do. Season 13 into season 14, like, surely the team comps won't be full AD, full magic damage. And then even the game where I went maw and all that stuff against full magic damage, I wish, I still wish that I had the AD and HP for whatever reason, whatever magical reason that I can't articulate right now. Alrighty, so, we got level 13. Bang, he is maxed. Okay, and then we got a lot of items. <laughs> now it's time to fight and then win the objectives. On to Zillion, the lame champ. Oh, tried to flash his ulti, but not the case, not the case, my bad. Got exhausted, and I got the Zillionol, and I'm delivered on top of Varus. <laughs> not looking good. So we want to win that fight and then go do the Baron, right? But since I died, now it's slower. But you don't want to skip the step of, like, farming just because you failed to play right. It's not going to be do this, die, reset, and back on the map, die again when all the camps are up. So now it's time to go do the camps as a loser. Put an L on my back, I don't care. Guys, I'm just showing up for class. You have to go to class on time. You're gonna get written up. One seventy six yes to one thirty four. Snorty. That's where it gets real lame for Vi too. Any farming any any matchup for Vi in which she's playing into farming jungler. She gets out ramped so quickly. <laughs> has this reliance on doing early play, so it's in her best interest to farm in the early game. Malphite, what's the deal, man? What are we doing here? He'd risk it all for the turret. And good for it. Dragon or Baron, 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 Baron. Vi is bot. Baron, 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 Baron. Do the Baron. Come on, guys, let's do the Baron. When you're doing the Baron, make sure to use the Q and the Stride Breaker. That's it. Don't use the E on it, like I just did. You always want to save the E and the W, just like um, on Rift Herald. 
you want to save them for the fight. I mean, no one's around. I'm going to cast that E for... Bang, 36 damage, baby. 36. I'm a risk taker. 120 on the dragon, so let's clean up this guy's blue side and then reset, probably. Level 15, damn. Who right clicked those camps like me, huh? Do it like me. Now, Caitlyn's pushing. If Caitlyn's pushing, so am I. Run. So now I can buy the specific resistance, and I'm definitely buying armor for sure. The the Varus is outrageously juiced. So whenever I land on top of him, I don't want to get like two shot. We have a weird stack in our red side. Caitlyn, careful. Caitlyn. Run. Ouch. Nice. We got hit damage with a spell shield. Gotcha. Cute. Nice. I got the cannon too. Nice. Baron buff, Rift Herald pushing down. I think we might win this game. A little busy, Bob. What is that? Do dogs normally dress like that? Alrighty, GG. One more win, baby. All I'm asking is for one more normal win in North American League of Legends. GG, I'll see you in the next one. Whatever. Alright guys, welcome back to the jungle. We need one win to get the five normal wins to MMR boost the account. And I'm joined by Waltistic once again. Except this time I don't have this deadly cough in which he has to talk for me. So, hi Walt. Hello. Do you like Nocturne? Uh... When they don't go lethality, yes, I like it very much. Okay, now you're an ADC main, so what do you do against a Nocturne whenever you're playing against them? Well, I don't really look at the, when I'm playing the laner, I don't really care about the Nocturne, because generally they're going to fall clear quite a bit. So it gives me a lot of freedom my lane, you know, like I can, if I have a good matchup, I can fist them. If I don't have a good matchup, then it's not going to be worse, because this champion just... Generally, they you know they farm to level six, which is generally when they get that stride breaker that they get kind of nuts because now it's almost guaranteed to land their fear. Right. I think uh, too, even past level six, they have to keep farming. So once one ulti is spent, if it's not on you, you're probably having a good time. Q E. That was easy. He's just like another jungle camp. Malkai shows bot with my blue, so we both started each other's blue side. <laughs> now, <laughs> Wukong doesn't have TP, so we also don't have to worry about camping there. Pretty chill, honestly. We vertical, and then Malkai has the onus to really gank the bot lane. Do you think this yeah, is this like... Is... How do you feel about these these bot lanes? If I'm a, since I'm abandoning my bot lane, what do you think? Like Normally, I don't like... Abandoning a, a bot lane, such as well, it's farming set, it's a little weird, but generally, you know, I don't, I'm not a fan of weak siding bot lane permanently. But on matchups like this, you know, like Taya, Janna, there's not really any threat. Like, we, we can see it here, like, they could get ganked so many times, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> well, if Syrah plays like that, then maybe it works out <laughs> for them, but see, even when they're playing it like that, like, the chances of them actually, like, oh. dying or oh. having a bad outcome is just four so HP. low. <laughs> Like, legit, Syrah played it as bad as possible, and it doesn't matter, you know? There's so little threat from the opponents that a bot lane like that can do anything, even the weak side. Dude, I swear, and that's This where... is kind of more the vulnerable bot lanes. Yeah, like, I swear, that's where Maokai is so weak now. But then you pair him in with low damage champs, Zaya Janna, into this? Yeah, even worse. <laughs> Alright, let's reset. I want to ward his wolves first. These bad boys will be respawning, and then... I'll get to, I don't want to take him though. What do you think? Take him? 
I'm not sure. I think we needed more info. I would have liked if you pressed tab a little bit more so we can track how many camps because we saw that he took your blue, but we're not sure if he took your entire jungle. So because I right. had a feeling he showed up too early, like to have taken all of your bot side, if that makes sense. Right, he did red and then my blue gromp. That was his path. And then he's level three bot and then he leaves and does one camp. So now he has 25. He went from yeah, 16 to 25. Reset. So that means he's done his red side. Yeah, we get a respawn gromp. We don't get respawn wolves, which is technically kind of bad, but we get tempo for it, which is not bad. Yeah, but then we're in on the top side. Wait. <laughs> okay. He just finished wolves. That icon was still there. Ugh, cute. The raptors. Oh, that's right. I did golems first. Here we go. Walking on up there. Let's see. Here we can technically noob trap the Maokai because we know he's killing Romp. So either he's going to try to gank Fiora because he's a noob and thinks she's overextended. And then we can get a really easy counter gank because she, she still shouldn't have flash. Okay, it should be coming up. It's already up if he has cosmic insight. Right. But I, if I he doesn't do, then we're now. almost... Yeah. Whoa! Oh, I'm just there it is. Rock. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. He is so late, and here he is. Repose. Waiting. Phew. I fucking missed. Sorry, man. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, my bad. This is not a kill. W, Q. Maybe it is a kill. Ah, I'm slicing! Oh my god, owned. Oh, I want mine for Mana. Q. Take a little CS there on our way out. Oh, let's leave. Yeah, he had six. <laughs> Run away! Well, that went better than expected. I, I can't believe how insanely late he was. And then that shit. Uh, you were right. The noobs. Once a noob, always a noob, dude. <laughs> Become... The mind of a noob. No, that mistake I is mean, actually really bad because you had the tempo lead, but the fact that he allowed you to like cash that in so early means that you're like permanently ahead from Maokai now. Yep. With the mind of a noob too, it's like if you are in beginner's mind, like then that's how like the expert operates, you know? That part's so true. Yeah, <laughs> something that I've noticed playing some of the like the best players. A lot of, of it has been like when you hear them talk about the game, something that I've noticed is that a lot of the times they're not playing League per se, they're playing like the other player, they're doing psychological tricks, they're just like... Because a lot of the times you'll hear people see like this is fundamentally correct, this is what you should do, etc, etc, and that is all fine obviously, the fundamentals are important. But a lot of the times they're like, oh the enemy is a human, so I can like kind of make him make a mistake, it's almost like they're mind controlling them. And a lot of the times when you play low elo, you're not actually... You're Rack. doing that, you're playing the player a lot. Q! Oh, ay ay ay. Zyra the man. Oh, I'm missing these Qs, dude. Damn. <laughs> I'll kill someone eventually, just give me a sec. That's hard as old. Yeah, looking good. Oh, Maokai <laughs> wants to die too. All I had to do is eat a Maokai dump. She gets both! She has four kills, what the fuck? Save some for me, baby. So now with our ulti down, we're gonna be farming. The classic. But, now I'm gonna be a little over leveled, so when I run into these bad guys, I have a lot of HP. It's kind of my shebang here. Okay. Q. W. Pink. Smite. Waiting on Q. <laughs> Come on, Zyra plant. Get your fifth kill. My ulti's coming up. This is pretty stupid, I'll be honest. She walked away. Well played. Meanwhile, what is Maokai doing? The blue side camps? We do not care. What do you think? Because we have all the jungle camps up. We could reset, we could do dragon. 
we could stay bot lane. What do you think? Yeah, usually right now, I mean, I'm if I'm when I'm playing the jungler here, I feel quite relaxed. I guess it's like I feel like I could do whatever I wanted. There's almost no negative outcomes at this point. So more, most likely, I'm generally like thinking, okay, what is the Mauk I gonna do now? You know, right? Because he's the one with the limited options. He's gonna gain top for sure. Yeah. So for example, we knew already that he was gonna be topside, but there's so many options. Like he could have been. Absolute, I don't know, ape, and just take your top side. You know, that's a possibility. Nice, right? But he Maybe doesn't want Herald to do that. Was also possible. Yeah, he, he wants to get a player. So Harold or uh, Fiora would be his good options. And once I show bot, it opens up at least a solo Harold, and then that takes some more time. I mean, do I have to counter what he wants to do, or what I do on the bot side, does that matter more? That's like the equation we're playing on. Yeah, I just like to think about, sort of, their options. Because oh. I feel like when you're trying to learn the game, if you don't get used to thinking what your opponent can do, even when you're ahead like this, there's a possibility you just let him catch up to you. True. Like, I've definitely seen people get a lead as jungle, and then they get, like, I don't know if centered on, on a play is kind of what I'm going for. But let's say here, the Nocturne stays bot, but he gets too centered, for example, in fighting. I've seen that a lot. And then the lead, like, some starts, like, crumbling away because they're constantly trying to do, I guess, PvP. When generally, when you get already ahead, you want to do the opposite. You want to focus a bit more on PvE because your lead is not going to go anywhere, you know? So how do we do that? I guess the first part is, you know, having the discipline to be like, okay, I'm not going to be forcing fights, you know? I don't need that anymore. Literally just look at the camps and your... The camps that you can do, because, you know, in this scenario, it's a good example that you could just do the opponent camps, right? What, do his blue side camps? No, I meant like the, the example of how you took his red side. Mm. Uh... That was a possibility here, so that's also important to sort of think about. Because I feel like maybe some players, oh, when they think ulted. of invading, when they think of invading, they're mostly thinking of, about fighting, I feel like. Like yeah. here, technically there's been a lot of invading, but it's more on the end of like counter jungling. Like I'm allowed right. to take We're your camps, for the resources. but this is what I'm going to do. Exactly. And then the resources make me strong to then attack the laners instead. Because Maokai, if you invade him to attack him, he just wastes your time. That's most tank junglers. I hated that matchup, Belveth versus Maokai, most of the season. For that same sort of reason. It's annoying. Because if you... If you don't, you know, it's like a battle to take his camps. These guys are screwed. I wish I had ulti. I clean this bad boy up right here. Yeah, they're yeah they don't have flash now. The one v three is sus, but who pressed my Oh, he's walking into us. This is perfect. Think, think. My urge to flash Q the Jana is so high. <laughs> See, now you have the smart one, like, counter gank Maokai top because he's a noob. I'm like, I can flash Q Janna because she's a noob, but it don't do nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that would be a good rule of thumb, actually, is that... Um, early on, just getting a kill can be helpful, you know? Like, starting a snowball with one kill is not bad. But once you already have a lead, you want the, to be able to get the kill and then something else, you know? Right, Like, if yeah. flashing forward means you just kill someone, that's probably not worth. So but I if flashing forward themselves. means, like, you kill them... Oh. oh, it's getting dicey. They're doing random rotations now. Someone die already, damn! Phew. Moving. W. Damn. Oh, that's a lot of guys. My bad, that's an overcommitment. You know, when there's too many people, you don't go into that many people. Yeah, the Janna running down mid already... It was giving me an odd feeling. 
Because this definitely happens a lot. I think even in Diamond it can still happen where people just start going to random places. I'm not sure how to describe it, but like here you saw even Wukong was already walking. Pretty sure before the fight even started. Yep. Which makes no sense. But this happens a lot in more chaotic games. Now, it can be hard to focus on chaotic games because you get confused, right? You might not, it might not be clear to you as a player, like, what am I supposed to be doing here? It's so chaotic, it feels I like think everything's all over can, the place. I think we can go back to, like, reacting to what the enemy's going to do. Yeah. Like you said, the we best don't have to way, force the plays. Yeah, the best thing you can do in games that are chaotic is just stay back a little bit. Just chill for a second. Hell yeah. In shooters, this was very line. common, actually. Uh, well, I think this rule actually applied when I started playing League. It's essentially you'll just let the opponent outplay him themselves, you know? When the game is chaotic, the chance of mistakes happening is very high, so you are, you want to be the one out of the nine people in the lobby oh that's God. actually like... You're giving me flashbacks to Call of Duty, because that's exactly how I play it. Like, when things are going fast, it's like you hold the right position, and then the guy will just run, like sprint around the corner and he's dead. And it's like, it's legit 7,000 times e easier. <laughs> the Wukong has Divine Sunder. Oh, they don't know I'm here. Oh, they do know I'm here. Now they do. Cute W. Oh, he got red buff. Help! We win. They're all coming down. Let's leave. Let's let them make some mistakes. I got Spear of Sojin. Fuck! Little exit path right here. So much for that. Fuck. <laughs> e moving dead. Clean him up. Clean him up. <clears throat> Somewhere in here had to have been warded, but like, I have no clue when they would have been able to do that. Well, with Spear of Sojin, now we have a lot more HP, AD, ability haste. It reduces the cooldowns of our basic abilities, but it's mostly for the Q for Nocturne. Which isn't nothing, especially against these range champs. We're not building a, a one-shot build, so... We're gonna get on top of them, they're gonna flash away, and then our second Q will help us get on top of them. And then also, deals a good amount of damage to a squishy champion. I'm gonna go to the top side here. Try to get the Rift Herald off the board. Oh, might yeah. get awkward the way they're moving. Yeah, Seems they're just permanently grouping for no real reason. Cute. Close. Damn, I wish I went the blue trinket. W. I don't know if Saya has all, but at least she doesn't have flash. We burned it on the Botlin skirmish. Still doesn't look good though. Run! Deal some damage. Gosh. Oh gosh, they're all so grouped. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Too many noobs. Not enough my noobs. I need some allies on top of me. We when you're out in games like this, it's always solid to just keep full clearing. They're <laughs> constantly looking to group and oh God. do weird things. Ass. You can, you know, probably means that they're not all farming. That's right, it's getting chaotic. We need to keep it solid. These jungle camps, they never change. They hit me the same way. How much horsepower your car have? <clears throat> you there? Yeah. <laughs> How much horsepower does your car have? Sorry, I don't actually get this one. There's no. It's. <laughs> Never mind. I, I got my ulti. It's on the party. Oh, a free kill. I wonder if I do. Yeah, he's completely alone. You know what's nearby, but it looks like she recalled. Zareth is probably one of the worst champions to receive a Nocturnal. Like, he can't do nothing. Yep. Now, it looks like he's still doing some random groups, but we're going to be able to take this tower just really good. So even though we lose Herald, we get right. essentially what the Herald wants. Like, a second Herald, usually the target for that second Herald, is going to be this tier 2 towers because of the amount of gold they give. So we get a, a tier 2 tower, while they get the Herald, it's essentially just as good, if not better. I'm gonna defend mid. I think Fiora has that. 
Then mid by proactively farming. Who's with me? Who's up again? A whole bunch I feel like of if you press that right now, yep, the gold. Like the difference in CS between you and Malfa is huge. You <laughs> yep. Double it right now. This will be the and whole. And that's because unranked. of. Yeah. It's for that same thing, you know. You keep farming. He keeps trying to like do random things. Just like I was saying before, the whole thing about like kind of playing on the mental of the game, uh, of the players. I mean, you know, put yourself in like sort of the Maokai shoes. You know, like oh, like um, Nocturne got my blue side, right? Like he got that gank on. Wukong, etc. Like he starts feeling that there's uh, some pressure on him to sort of, I don't know, perform, to do something. Maybe the pressure is not just mental, maybe his team is actually actively flaming him. Like, why are you not ganking, jungle gap, etc. Like, all these factors are, like, not irrelevant. I think that's the right word. The teammates are irrelevant right now. Real. Come on, Betsy. The stealth really hurts because I can't fucking auto him. Okay. Nice. Not so nice. Sucks that we don't one shot, huh? Run! Ugh. Oh. I gave it a shot right there. Yeah, these early drakes are still. How many drakes do they have? Have we been able to get any drakes? It's their first stack. This type of stuff is like. Fine to give. I'm just annoyed that my team like lost that fight so hard. Yeah. I feel like we're juiced. Alrighty, so I think Maokai was still in the bot side, so I could try to punish his red side. But we have a problem that there's these base gates, and Wukong's an asshole. So I mm. think I'll do scuttle. They seem to still be pushing. We could push our top side. Wukong has no ult or ignite, so I doubt he can kill us. You'd be surprised. That guy has a lot of armor. We have no wave. I'll be taking the camps. Mr. Maokai drops his rift tail, doesn't even get the turret. That's fine. We farm these so damn fast, too. I'm looking for Black Cleaver and then I probably just go some sort of tank item after that. Now they're randomly grouping in topside. These wards are so random. <laughs> and then even though it is normal draft like NA, like it's like around Emerald uh, MMR. <laughs> Lol. Yeah, it looks like Emerald Plat. And like, you could say, oh, it's a normal pool, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, they are going to play the same way in a ranked game. I just think most, like, especially lower ranked players are just scared of, like, the unknown when it comes to those players. Which, it makes sense, they don't have experience. And it's also, like, kind of hard to see, like, an Emerald player. And that's where I tell a lot of lower ranked players, if they play normals, then they get exposed to things like that more often. And they also get an opportunity to play. I feel like it can help game. with, uh, I heard a lot of people, nice. I don't know, complain, but like, say they struggle with like rank anxiety. I feel like yeah. spamming norms for a while can help with like, like, because it's ultimately a, fe a fear of losing, right? Right. Dude, I swear, norms are like so good for so many reasons. One of the things that I, uh, I get particularly in coaching, W, E, auto, auto, I we spell shield, it is hard to. In coaching, I get people who are smart, but mechanically bad, and, or it's usually mechanically unexperienced or simply don't put enough time into the game. And then I tell them to play norms and they think like I'm trolling. Unironically, oh, even ARAMs. Cause mechanic is something that you only improve at or get good at if you play a lot. Oh, I think Cause not only is like there. getting mechanicals, like skill, but also keeping it. Yeah, you know, it's just so you need to play a lot. Yeah. So even even in Arams, because Arams are just permanent team fights, right? So you can learn team fight unironically by playing Aram. You won't learn your champion, so, obviously, because so it's a different game. In there. I'm watching this anime called Demon Hunter, and one of the opening things is like this guy's training arc, right? And he swings the sword, you know, hundred thousand times a day, 
and then that's that and it's like so much of what they're doing with the training is building up experience because <laughs> they just mention the knowledge part like once or twice and in league with like unranked players or like people looking to learn they get so addicted to that learning process which i never did um I never looked up guides and shit before I really started climbing, and I, I don't know. And they also just didn't exist as much in like any palatable capacity. Like season three, season four, it was all it was all probably wrong too. But anyway, like they get addicted to that info info part of it rather than what I got. What I like about the game is that experience part, building up that understanding. Uh, also being a fucking noob and messing stuff up and then getting better at it as I go. I'm going for death stance. I don't want to get one shot. My fucking Wukong and Zayats are like strongest members. Now, I need to <coughs> mostly wait for a fight to be started and then pick my 1v1 now. If Zerath wants to die, that's the thing. If Zerath wants to die, we gotta kill him. It's done. The whole team is rotating on this. That is crazy. Moving. Yeah, it does kind of suck to not spend our ulti for the fight, but I also don't care about the fight as much. Whoa! The thing, the thing is that it was so close to the objective that you can at least turn into a 5v4, even though you lose the ult. Now right. your team, though, yeah. is also kind of dead set on making it an uneven fight. Yeah, that's where I'm at with my team. It's like, I know that if I don't ult in to start a fight, like, nothing that. So let's just let nothing out. Let's, like, let's let nature take its course here. What do you think? Yeah, if like, your team wants to die, just, you know, let them die. Kind my prior games. Oh, man, nobody hit it. My prior games, I was trying to, like, support my team like it's a challenger game and I'm on Nocturne. No. <laughs> yeah, that never works. <laughs> You're telling me. Telling me two- I've lost two games! Telling me two games too late. I think this is the reason why, unironically, games in Emerald can be harder than in Challenger. Because you have no allies. If you want something to be done, you have to do it by yourself. There's no other choice. Right. I'm starting the fight, boys. It didn't do nothing and they died. I think we will lose. No, yeah. I need one win. We can do this. We can do this. Shut the fuck up. We can do this. <laughs> Here's where the um, the experience can come into play. I mean, you can start. You, the more you play, the more you can reach better answers of like, okay, how can I win this game? The enemy is just permanently grouping, right? And we've been, even though it's bad, we know it's bad. We can punish it personally, you know, getting more ahead ourselves. But it seems our team is still, you know kind of lost about what to do. So every fight that we try to do, even when we're stronger, has failed. So maybe we need to look for stuff that doesn't involve fighting. Um, Such as? The thing that I think of instantly here is yeah. just try to sideline. Maybe now it's a bit too late, but unironically, even as a jungler, buy hole breaker and go to a side. Because we already like know that we were the only one who was able to capitalize on it and get ahead. <laughs> So honestly, split pushing could be a, a viable thing because we know they like to... The enemy team loves to just group together, like no matter what. Like even if you're getting a pick on the silent, they're all going to come together, you know? Yeah. So the the way that I can... The first thing that I can think of it, the experience is... <laughs> exactly. We let our... Because our team has consistently failed every fight, meaning fighting is not an option. Maybe we can drag people to our side. You know, if we push at the same time that our team is doing it, then, you know, if everybody on the enemy team tries to match us, then they can't fight our teammates, right? Surely they must be able to do something. If that still fails, then, you know, maybe there really isn't anything you can do, you know? Some, sometimes you just lose games. Yeah, true. Like, look here, while we're all doing this, what is Close. our team doing? Syra is picking up daisies in the jungle. Mosahar and Senna are sharing a, la a wave, and Fiora is <laughs> also just picking daisies, except on enemy jungle. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Sell these components for Hole Breaker? <laughs> I don't know about selling them, but hey, nah, we're kind of desperate. I don't know, we can I don't think we can Let's party, if baby. We don't sell it. Let's do this. 60 AD, 400 HP, 150% 
base mono regen. 5% movement speed is kind of interesting because we already get these. Um, oh, this is a percentage movement speed increase too. I thought it was flat. That's still fine because this also gives us flat movement speed. And then it gives us the passive of giving us a whole bunch of resistances and more damage to the turrets when nobody is around us. Now, now this does give us kind of a, another chance to go wrong because what happens if our team also tries to uh, you know, <laughs> group with us? That could be a problem. So I think here you can also practice communication, for example, like you ping your item, you tell them to piss off, like <laughs> all of you go, go push Write the that same down. lane. Write that down. You know? Ping the whole breaker, tell them to piss off. And then? Then you just spray. Honestly, when game, the game, a lot of games will end up in states like this. And honestly, you just need to understand that there's things beyond your control. One thing you can do is stuff you're like my, this. You're my now, therapist you just, now. <laughs> you just try to control. I mean, saving your mental is kind of important. If you like start hating this game when you're trying to improve, it might not get too far, honestly. I'm kidding, Ahorn. They have so much damn feel. The QSS? Oh, yeah, yeah, I should have saved that. Oh, uh, I never considered that when I was a noob because I came from... Well, I, I like went through the process of getting good at a game before with Call of Duty and some other things like minorly. And my process there was bash my head against it until it worked. I mean, ne yeah, never I really mean, thought this... my way into success. I feel like this comes later on, like not when you're learning the game. Like you can do it from the beginning is what I'm saying, but it usually comes later on that you start facing into these games where like, say your fundamentals or like the stuff that you know is just not working, right? And you gotta think of like, I don't know, wacky ways to actually win the game. Like you have to sort of think outside the box right. in some of these games. Because the standard stuff just doesn't work, you know. Some yeah. people in other gaming get things, this idea that, they and kind of get lost in it. They yeah, 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 like the boss, like going too, too deep. Yeah, because uh, I've seen these people. I, it, I feel like it happens more with one tricks. Yes, they start thinking of stuff with their one trick, and they go into some weird rabbit holes where they start doing really weird stuff with their champion, and they refuse to do anything different. I want to see if I can think of an example. Like the most basic stuff is like, say you buy, you play, I don't know, Philios, and you are dead set that Gale Force is the best mythic, so you don't want to buy anything else, right? Right. You never buy anything else. Like let's say you even take the exact same runes every game. I see that a lot with OTPs, and some people go in really deep rabbit holes where the decisions that they start making for their champion are like. Wow, they're just really far they off. Ha they have like works. a chain effect too. Yes, this they start saying, that. "This is the best way to play on my champion." I know what I'm like. I know I know a lot about this because I'm one million mastery points on this champion, right? And they refuse to change, but you know they're still maybe they're not even low elo. I can you can see them higher up, but generally like you'll see them just being low elo, and it's like okay, then why is it like not working? You know, they feel like they cracked some sort of weird code. So that that's sort of one of the dangers of thinking outside the box. Like you want to be, I guess the thing that they lose is like the flexibility. Because you start out like, oh, I want to be flexible. I want to think of other stuff. I want to do stuff that other people aren't really doing, you know? But then they lose the flexibility and they get like kind of arrogant. If you can cleave the flexibility, it can actually lead to more wins. Like here, if we can be flexible, be like, Playing with my team doesn't work. Like my champion, everything that I want to do in a game like this is play with my team, but it's just not working and there's nothing I can do about it. You build whole break and you just pray, <laughs> really. We break you can't break real make fast. your teammates you can't make your teammates play better, you know? Nope. Like at this point I'm just thinking how can I become as self sufficient as possible? I'm thinking Bork. Like I want some lifesteal. Okay. Okay, let's do it. You see, they're still grouping. They've been grouping for 20 minutes, right? The best way we can, the best thing we can do is either force them to split up, or you know, make it so our team cannot be contested. Okay, we. If we can up. hit the tower at the same time, our team can hit that tower. Then we're guaranteed to get something. 
Team, we finally made them split up. We have Maokai bot, we have two people mid lane, and only one person matching us. Now they're going back into grouping. Oh. Look, finally we're able to get something for free. Unconditioned. They're gonna come for us. We are well but we're able, zero. thanks to Hallbreaker, we're able Dude. to destroy this thing, and we also managed to get the mid lane tower. They're probably gonna look, this is good, patience, look. Waiting and seeing what the enemy is gonna do, right? There's no objective, and if things go bad, the only thing we can lose right now is our base, you know? So, so even though they got the Baron, we're the ones pushing. Exactly. Oh. The good thing of getting all of these towers is it's so hard for them to actually punish you taking camps and stuff. They can't even ward comfortably. This is this starts feeling so free, and now is when the enemy can start bleeding out resources very fast. Run! Sorry, 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 sorry. Jana was instantly behind her, Bob. Damn shame. It's chain. fine. We got some other long cooldowns like exhaust. Meaning the next time we'll actually fight them, have an easier time. Our cooldowns are way shorter. We almost have our ult back up. True. Right now, if Saya still wants to push, we can actually kill her. So 1v2, Saya might still have ult, but they don't have the important cooldowns. Nice, my ulti's coming up. You're right, they don't have that exhaust on Jonna. Ooh, big ulti. USS. Nice. Wow. As nice. always, no matter how bad your team is, and how bad numbers advantage play is it. always numbers advantage. <laughs> All righty, a Bork, a hole breaker. <laughs> what? Red pot? Uh, I actually don't know my damage. I would go for iron. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, Fiora's pushing those. Fiora, have, Fiora also has Holberg this is incredible. We might be able to actually get this dragon because of it. We could have been pushed mid ourselves. For some Maokai top. Somebody has to push mid. We get the worst person doing it, let's go. They're all going. This is the power of split push and this is when it works. When you can time your split push to something else, like the noobs don't know what to do. Nice, we got Dragon Soul. Now oh, this is soul is amazing for Nocturne. I need to get the top lane. Kill this guy. Oh. Let's see the pork damage. Damn, if I press W, I think I killed him. As I landed, he just fucking queued me. Ult in 19 Why does Jana seconds. Have so much HP. What the fuck did Janna build? He's Just level... support items? Yeah, that is. He's level 16. <laughs> that is cursed. God damn, wait, I should have been top. What's he coming up? We burned their ultis, so. Oh. Okay. Run! Alright, let's skedaddle. We could take the wave, so they can't push. If we could get to bot, we could end the game unironically. <laughs> oh, now we just want to stall. Look at that bot wave. That ends the game by itself. Hello, friend. Nice, we got the W off. This guy is going a million miles per hour. Look, we got a Nexus Tower. They have nothing now. We might end the game here. <laughs> My attack speed's going crazy! GG! There it is. GG! Yeah, hold up. Yeah, we're getting a little bit too excited there, Fiora. Oh, Bob, I'm... <laughs> we can't fucking end. Hmm. Mid. Yeah, you get something. Think, think, dude, my attack speed with you this dragon get. and the Bork and everything is so crazy. 
You triple inhib, no? You can try. I feel like you should have gone for the other inhib so you can use Holbreaker on it. Oh, I didn't know it was coming up. It's still fine, you have the six gates. True. Okay, I'm pretty sure I saw a stat somewhere where like, if you have all three inhibs, like, 90 something percent of games are like, guaranteed to win. Some shit like that, I saw was the stat. <laughs> 90%, let's go. Like, like I can't the believe we made you... this comeback, this is like crazy enough for me. Gotta be flexible, gotta really think outside the box in these weird games. Because especially on lower elos, well, I want to say like... It's everywhere, it's super every elo low. range. I remember Definitely. doing this shit in plat, where I'm on Renekton, I'm trying to win all I have, and then like, I have to do it weird, I have to split push on Renekton in this game. Nothing else yeah, working, I built yeah, a TM Those are the, the elos where I feel happen the most, like around plat, you know, plat emerald. This happens a lot, where the enemy just plays very weird. So it's really hard to like find a way that you can like really win that game. Experience will let you see this a bit more, but still, it's kind of like it's not easy to see. Yeah, it, it's experience, but it's also like kind of natural. So experience helps you play it well, but yeah, experience is like oh, I've seen this before. You become kind of like skips from regular show, you know. But you still need some ingenuity to come to the answer in the first place. Little tip. For people who don't know, the when you have Baron buff, the minions will speed up based on you. So right now, if we Q on Nocturne, minions will go faster. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so the champs that have... Right now, you can go to the minions. Yeah. If you give them buff, you yeah. see how they go faster. He goes 549 from like 400. Q! Like that damage. This oh. is really important in champs like John is Cannon. behind her. <laughs> it's yep. stupid. <laughs> they're very split up, so again, we already know if they're split up, we win. Look, Fiora's going in. That's one it. noob down. They're, they're fighting bot. Yeah, look. We don't even have to fight them, we just end the game. We still have our hole breaker. I can't believe we win it. I can't <laughs> believe it. 15 <laughs> 5 is the final score. Stridebreaker dealing 1600. A Bork dealing 1600. And Black Cleaver dealing uh, 2200. And then bonus damage to towers, 2,500 with that hole breaker. <laughs> and we, and we bought it when there was only like, there was only the, the, like the, the base ones, like the inhib and the nexus towers were up when we bought it. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Think outside the box, free your mind. Think for yourself. We got to honor Hillary the Hawk, huh? Couldn't have done it without him. She picked herself up at the end. She saw the Holebreaker play, and she followed. Bro. Alrighty, and that's five wins and then two losses. So that boosts the MMR of the normal account. If we refresh this bad boy. Let's see with what ranks we played with that game. Because I know I've been playing with Emerald, and that's alright. Uh, this was not the game. Oh yeah, you like the IGN of this account? <laughs> it's my pants. <laughs> I did not choose it. Platinum hey, 4. If it's Nocturne, dude, you're making them piss their pants. They're afraid. <laughs> Ulti. Piss my pants. Flash away. Die. <laughs> Alrighty, Platinum 4, Emerald 2, Gold 3. It's okay. It's okay, we'll see. It's mainly about whenever you start climbing on the account, then... Uh, the MMR will stay generally high, so even if you lose some, it's okay, but then if you win some, you really accelerate the process. That's the general idea. But alrighty, GG, thanks for joining me. Walt, Walter White, any final words here? Nothing much, guys. Think outside the box. Cook stuff, right? Stay in the kitchen. <laughs> Stay in the kitchen. Alrighty, GG, peace.